Welcome back, everyone. Episode 21, the season finale of Abomination Vaults on the Undeniably Good Time Network. Much abomination lays in wait for us today. I got a three. 13. Cool. You get the choice of candy. Yeah. Well, you don't get to roll that doing the, the, the candy over there. Stuff I know. To well, start we missed it with. before the pregame, so we had to be official. Yeah, yeah, no, of course, of course. Um, I also got a three, so you do get the candy. <laughs> <laughs> he got a three on all three dice. It's pretty. No, I got a three on the one that matters, and I rolled the other two to see what I also got. Fair. The black die is the one that winning. We're is very winning serious today. people, as you can see. Uh, I'll sit here and roll my dice over and over until I get a twenty before the session starts. And then he'll say he always rolls twenties because of it. Correct. No, no, I charge my dice. That's now it. they're primed to roll twenties when you speak up and say he can't keep getting away with it. I've so, stopped doing that, and, and I haven't been despair. rolling nearly as many twenties. Well, I've learned the secret, I suppose. I'm ready now. You know what I like is how I arrange all my dice, even though I don't use anything. I use like two of them, but I arrange all hope, of them. Hope springs eternal. Yeah, so they're all they're all faced up at their most. Uh, they're, they're the bones are level. below average. I put mine right? at the lowest. I want to weigh all the RNG down towards the good numbers. When last we left our heroes. <laughs> <laughs> get us on track, DM. Get us on track. <laughs> they had just completed their investigation inside the town of Otari, finding the relics of the Rose Guard, vital ancient artifacts from the original Rose Guard party who took down Bel Cora 500 years ago. And these artifacts are needed to bring down the spiritual barrier blocking their way further down. The brooch, the book, and the um, oh, thieves' tools, thank yeah, you, uh, were easily enough obtained. Uh, in one case, the thieves' tools from their very owner, or the ghost thereof. Um, but the sword was a bit more of, uh, of, of a work. Uh, indeed, the descendant of Volrajani's uh, took her sword and tried to abscond with it, um, not really liking how the transfer of ownership went over the centuries. Uh, but that's okay. Our brave heroes tracked them down and cut a deal with him, saying, hey, if you uh, come with us to the Abomination Vaults, uh, we won't, and help us break the seal, we won't haul you into uh, town right away, into jail. And it's totally safe. No big deal. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine for you. We oh, tried God. to talk him out of it. You yeah. left him alone with I Nil. <laughs> yeah, that's worse for him. And Nil led him to the Abomination Falls, where he will meet up with a lot of you, or at least that is the plan. But who are our spectacular, intrepid explorers? Paragons of justice and law, every one of them, I'm sure. Mm. Why don't we go around the table Whoa, and choose ourselves? I have never claimed who any is, of those things. Who Nor have you acted on it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. oh, who really? is Nil, and why is she convincing a man to put himself on this weird machine in a basement? That's an excellent <laughs> yes. question. Why don't you tell us about Nil? Who is Nil? Nil Grumman over here, our resident uh, dwarven druid over here, uh, you know, just trying to find cool monsters and... Uh, Nothing, you know, too untoward. You know, I really just trying to make make sure that all of monster kind gets appreciated the, the way they really should should be. All 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 monster kind loved equally. Uh, of course, some monsters are more equal than others. Uh, in this mm -hmm. particular case, the uh, infernal centipedes, which are hanging around down your hat. Yes. Well, and if they don't really want to be studied, well, then I guess they're easily more easily studied dead. So such is life at that point. Well, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Dissection is always an option. Yep. Moving on. Hello, uh, I'm Iris uh, Riss. Uh, I'm Nils' new roommate. I am the epitome of the reduce, reuse, recycle philosophy we have here uh, in this party. As, um, you know, I was, well, I haven't always been in this body. I don't really know where I've been for the most part. The boneyard, mostly. I'm a returned spirit barbarian, and, uh, well, I'm not normal, and neither is my bunny. Phrasm and cat's paws make mm. the greatest inserts. I love them. No, she's a bunny. Uh, oh, yes, of course. A, a, a Phrasm and bun paws, bunny paws. Mm -hmm. That'll work. I'm not normal. The understatement of, well, I can't say century, so let's go with millennias. Oh, yeah, and how old are you? I'm legal. <laughs> Stop. <Whoa, whoa. No. laughs> 5,016. Uh, 5,016. <laughs> Moving on. Can't be that old. Galarian's uh, not been around for that long. You we'll allowed go over this. Here. 
No, you stop talking for now. <laughs> <laughs> You're last now. This is your punishment. Let's go to the end of the line. Fine by me. Corwin Ovashti, our resident field medic and compulsive gambler who definitely isn't having a problem with that being reintroduced to cards again after trauma. Whist isn't so bad a card, really. <laughs> no, it's good. That's the one where he didn't have to gamble any money despite compulsions and accidentally putting money on the table a lot. And despite trying to gamble money. You lost yeah. to a dog. <laughs> I'm losing to a rug. <laughs> I was distracted, not by the dog, but by the weird lady who kept pulling hands she shouldn't have been able to. And Definitely was cheating. And oh the wind my goodness. Was and and a villain point already. A Xantrok. Have a little extra. It's a spectacularly villainous sounding name, might I say, a Xantrok. Mm -hmm. I was distracted by the fruit juice. Ooh, it was really nice fruit juice. Yes. You mean you don't get to have it often. And then she brought out wine. She was liquoring me up. I mean, what can you expect? Well, we certainly have learned about Corwin. That's for sure. Is he legal? Moving on. I yield my time Street. to derp. <clears throat> Not an option. What Go. do you think this is, Congress? <laughs> <laughs> you actually have to do your job. I'm dead. Thank you. This isn't a democracy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a no-mocracy. Knew it. <laughs> uh, I'm Bobby. I'm playing Calvin Fimbley Bottom. He is the tiniest of the party. A little gnome. He's only two and a half feet tall. Weighs 20 pounds. But he is the best wrestler of the group. Also a wizard. But <laughs> definitely not using magic to cheat at wrestling. That's not a thing that happens. Of course not. And finally. You sure? It's my turn. We could go back around. <laughs> I just, if you want well, to buy some more time. Here, yeah, <laughs> over here, Nil Grumman, uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it was hilarious how far Jen launched her pencil <laughs> laughing at that. Just full scent. Howdy. I'm Derp, and I play Drevin Sorrel, the very large, very tall, very great knoll in full plate with a hammer and pies puppy. The destruction doggo. Now I'm the cop. Um, yeah. Grassy knoll. Forgot about that. Yeah. The grassy, the grassy knoll. knoll. <laughs> I'm just accumulating titles as we go. The grassy knoll. Man, Paladin champion of Saren Ray. And we join our heroes. Heroes, kind of. Adventurers. Adventurers, explorers. <laughs> He's explorers. like heroes, kind of. What? At me. I'm like, what do we do? What do we do? Whoa, there's hate over here. My goodness. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. You, you were just the last <laughs> one to blatantly say I'm not a hero whatsoever. That's so, true. you know, there's there's fair enough that. I, I agree with this statement. Um, <laughs> hero implies, like, planning and, you know. Exactly. Yeah. We never called ourselves heroes. Yeah. The town called us heroes. Yeah. To be yeah. fair, you how you are heroes of the town. You did indeed stop that, uh, up, that undead breaking out in the cemetery. You slayed the vicious Scalthrax that appeared mysteriously in town and terrified everyone. Uh, really, you all have a quite, if anything, especially for the vast number of townsfolk showing up to Mocker's funeral, uh, the um, the impact you all have had on the town has been tremendous. Philosophically My speaking, I'm not a hero, but I am a protagonist. Uh, this is the book finale. Uh, Papa. In mom, oh yes. In mama and in papa. Sorry, I'm gonna butcher that name. That's a lot of letters in a row. Yeah, what? it's just the finale of Din book mama one. Then mama and papa. It's it's pretty yeah. straightforward. Then mama and papa book finale. Are you done with the entire adventure path? Just the uh, chapter one of the abomination vaults. First book, effectively. You know, if more people did serenite funerals, there'd be a lot less undead uprisings. Because they're be that is ash. very true, actually. There could be more centipede uprisings. Though. There could be. There well, might be more theft then, of Let us not forget it. Corporeal though. undead is also a thing. So. Oh yeah. And then true. we're gonna take a one week break and come right back, right? We'll figure that out. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on our social media. We'll see when we get things pulled up. <laughs> book two, starting an hour after stream ends. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> our post show it. is the entirety of book two. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here for the long haul, guys. I've got so many five hour energies under this table. Well, Calvin better oh. die in this episode because <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna make it to that. <laughs> Take me, Nimbaloth. Take well, me. You'll away. notice if you try to remove yourself from your chair, yeah. you can't. <laughs> How many consecutive days do you think it would take to just play through a book? 
I mean, you just add up the hours in our season. Yeah, yeah, but like just straight, like we it's just play do eight, eight hours. It's not a mystery. I don't well, know how many. We, would, we have twenty one. We have twenty one episodes. It's sixty 5. hours. Three ish hours an episode. Three ish hours an episode. Can we please go and fight this thing? I, I want to die. Curious about this is this. post show content. This is totally post show content. Uh, our heroes are in town. <laughs> Mill has moved off to uh, secure your sword bearer uh, in the ruins of Gauntlet. And uh, while uh, you're waiting for her to return on the outskirts of town, uh, you do recall having taken the um, the plans of the Gauntlet from Volok's desk, as that it actually has some very laid out diagrams of everything that is um, in the uh, in the uh, the Abomination Vaults on the top three levels, perfectly laid out, uh, including uh, where certain rooms mentioned as teleport circle rooms. Um, but in particular, one thing that catches your eye is a tiny alcove off of the trophy room where you recall fighting the ghoul high priestess. And the um, it seems to be marked as a secure collection uh, and has a, um, a, a, apparently there's a secret door leading to that room that no one noticed. It was particularly well concealed. And that seems to be an area of particular import. Um, it's on your way down as well, so it may be worth stopping in there. We probably should take a look. I mean, if, it, if it's noteworthy enough that that Volik fella took care of it, I mean, it was Orbo's master or whatever. He kept calling Belcor or whatever his lady. Oh, was this the little puppet thing that you were talking about? I mean, it was the fish, yeah. But I guess you never met him. He did kind of blow up and get torn apart by hands before that. That's sad. I'm sorry. It's all right. I have new plans. Okay. You didn't Nil put... has come back. <laughs> you didn't put the gem in him, did you? Does it look... <clears throat> he looks totally normal. Not uh, not Iris, the man. Oh, the <laughs> man who you left in the vaults, who's going to oh, meet you there, who's yes. an active fugitive back in the town. Yeah, so I thought we were leaving Nil with the... Yeah, we I, thought we were with you. Me- I thought we were meeting them yeah, in yeah. the vault. Like, I thought Is that, that the was plan? the plan. That was the plan. Okay. Seemed like that if, was the plan. Well, Nil forgot about it. Yeah. Where is back, Carmen? Apparently, if Nil just shows up in town, we're gonna be like, "Hmm, where's the where's the where's dude? Carmen?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess I'm not there then. And is he alive? I was too excited. Well, it may be. T- if that's the case, then y'all are dilly dallying. Let's go. Yeah. I just got out of tea time. I gotta I gotta rest for a few minutes. Those those oh, card that games tea were time tough. Was, now I, How was your card game? Don't ask. Not your concern or your oh. business. That I lost, lost to a dog and a little girl. Oh. She cheated a lot. I can't explain how. Poor workman blames his We tools. did get the, uh, what was it called? The brooch? Brooch. brooch. Yeah. The one you're wearing right yeah. now. Yeah, you got I couldn't it. remember the name for it. That's a very nice accessory you have there. Does more than just look nice, too. Huh, does it? What um, does that say? Well, uh... So a uh, psychometric resonance on this is going to be a, uh, it's going to be pretty faint. Um, this thing has basically been a treasured relic of the Menem's family for, well, centuries. Uh, and indeed, it's seen nothing remotely really stressful going on about it. Um, but there are old impressions. Um, you do recall, you can, you can pick up very faint images of uh, desperate struggle. Uh, to overcome the uh, some sort of grand adversary, possibly uh, relics from the original fight to pull down Belcora over five centuries ago. Huh. It is indeed quite old. This will be very well suited to you. From what I can tell, I should be able to do something similar to what Nil does. But we'll have to wait and see, I suppose. You can make the best food ever? Magic. Oh. I guess cooking is kind of like magic. It's not far off. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of which, do you think that man will still be alive when we find him? Bit of a coin toss, really. Depends on if he decided to kind of go in on his own and whatnot. I mean, the floors we cleared out, they're cleared. He he doesn't doesn't listen to nil. If he found the weird mouth thing, then he might be in trouble. What is the weird mouth thing? 
bad. We'll tell, you, we'll tell you when you're older. And it talks a lot, but oh. you can't really understand it. And it tries to eat you, and it ain't good, and it bites. It's... Oh, so it's like one of the psychopomps. No, no. It's bad. Big old lump of flesh. Mm. Just mouths and teeth and eyes. It's, it's bad. I think it's lost in translation. Actually, that describes Gibbering Mouthers pretty well, actually. Lost in translation. <laughs> I suppose we should go. It's on the floor we gotta go to, so let's be careful not to go that way. Do we want to check every room now that we know where they are? No, we're gonna go to that secure vault that it says to, and I really don't care about the rest of these, because judging by the map, not too much going on in the rest. Fair enough. As you recall, and start moving your way uh, through the swamp to make your way back to Gauntlet, um, you do recall that as you look through the plans that there are some areas that are a bit out of date. Uh, and especially in the top couple of levels, there is a great deal of damage on the top floor of Gauntlet Keep, uh, having been exposed to the elements for five centuries. Um, but the second floor as well, um, you'll see some staircases that have collapsed and are no longer accessible. Although seeing where they lead, if uh, ever you had the urge to try to renovate this place, you would imagine uh, um, several stout hours with a pickaxe could eventually clear these stairs out. Um, but it's simply much easier just to take the long way and get around it. Um, moving your way through, uh, it seems that uh, Carmen did indeed wait uh, <laughs> on the first floor where Nil left him. A smart man. Uh, and he'll kind of uh, nod and wave. Um, he looks like he's lost in thought when you uh, come up to him, uh, and he's been kind of turning the sword over in his hands. Ah, all right, well. How's it going, comrade? Well, no one's no one's come here yet, so I guess it was a good good hiding place. So where are we, uh, where are we doing this thing? Inside, about three floors deep, three or four. All right. Didn't I've, count the first. I've had some time to do some thinking. And you know what? I think this entire place here, I, I, I think the problem is I need to just get back to my roots after this. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this town. Once we're done here, I'm going to go and find a boat, and I'm going to go back to Bolraji's homeland. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know much about it, but someplace up north, and uh, apparently that's where she came from. Uh, and I think that maybe I can go and kind of get a fresh start there, find some people where... These will be my people. I mean, it's been a while since I've been, but I think it's... That's the, no, it's a place called uh, Nid... Uh, Nidal? Nidal. Yeah, 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 that's the one. You uh, know what goes on there, right? I, I mean, I'll get, look, it can't be worse than this place. Listen, man, you gotta, you gotta let him have his hope so we can have a tragic ending to him when he gets killed by the gauntlet. What? I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong, Cal. This is... It's, I, I'm agreeing with Calvin. <laughs> For what it's, it's worth, wanted. after we go inside, try to stay Ooh. close but behind me. Oh yeah, no, no, I'm not. Ooh. I'm not here to go fight any crazy monsters or anything like that. I'm getting you down there where you need this sword, and then I'm gonna get the heck out. That's good. Your aura is looking very strong right now, but that could change very quickly. You're, 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 you're odd, and I'm, I'm not really. No, I do know how to feel about that. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to kind of keep on this other side. Don't take nothing too personal. He kind of just steps a little bit away. Coming from a man who spent a couple hours with Neil, that's, that's kind of a compliment. Really? Oh, Bun Bun, he doesn't like me. Would you still be here with him, or would you have just kind of wandered nearby? Well, I was uh, kind of probably going to head down to the room of the, the, the mechanisms for my cute little That's jewel. Fair. Just to, you know, get the scope of things just in case in case it needs to be used in the future. You, you took him there, said, wait here, <laughs> and then just walked in. <laughs> Don't worry. About Clearly very about comfortable with this place. If any well, weird I little did... blue guys show up, tell them to go away. Well, I did talk to him about, you know, certain activities that he could do. And he wasn't interested, so I figured he wasn't used to me, useful to me anymore. Lay down stay on here. this And he wants to be my demon table. child. <laughs> <You> want, <laughs> no? All right, well, I minion? guess we're done here then. Okay, never mind then. I guess if you're lame, At least she's here. direct about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the directness is, like, refreshing. Oh, good. Uh, good you want to be a minion? Bill. No? Okay. 
Yeah, yeah ba basically, Nil's not like the type of like evil witch of the woods who goes and tries to lure kids into her oven to eat yet. them. She's kind of like, yeah, hey, kid, you want to get eaten? <laughs> no, then get off my lawn. We're only level four. Right. We've still got lots of time. <laughs> well, what if they say yes? Oh, it's, I wasn't expecting to get this far. Great, awesome. Oh, yeah, I you go. All of the plans after they say <laughs> You're going to love this. I don't, know, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Like teriyaki sauce, or uh, I got some A1 here. Which one do you want to go with? Oh, gosh. Where is the secret room again? So you're looking uh, at the plans. You will consult it. It's on the third floor yeah, yeah. in the library off of the trophy room, uh, which you've never been to, but you may have walked past it on the way up here. Um, there is the uh, remnants of a giant fleshy golem statue thing that's been built into the side wall. Um, and uh, a lot of smashed display cases. I wonder how that happened. I'm amazing. I don't know how that happened, really. It's just, you know, yeah, it's, it's, things get a little rough down in the vaults. I'm sure that's just the, pat, the, 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 the ravages of time. That's all that was. Mm -hmm. Series of unfortunate events. Series of unfortunate events. Here's very fortunate events that led to no one getting hit for like three rounds. There you go. <laughs> Moving your way through the vaults. So Nil would have been able to go down there and take a look at that machine, uh, which is designed to kind of prep a body for soul transfer. And uh, you find that it's um, after your experiences of using it before, consulting notes, as well as your growing prowess in magical matters. Uh, it, it's fairly simple to go and set it back up again. Uh, you managed to scrape together enough reagents to power the thing. Um, all you would have to do would be to put a suitable vessel uh, that you could socket that gem back into. Hmm. Excellent. Are the, are the plans coming together? Uh, having... <laughs> are, are, so are you guys going to meet back up or... Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I would imagine. Because so that's, that's kind of up to nil. She to, I mean, that, what, she, what level is that? That's on like the second level, That's right? on the second level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we'd have we have to, to go her. by there. we got to pass her. That's true, actually. So I, I suppose mm -hmm. in relative short order, you would start hearing the tromping hear, and Yeah, I hear of uh, three hoots and four crickets, and I'm like, ah, that's Goblin. Okay, <laughs> let's go. and four crickets. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I'm really interested to know if, how, how good Callum's cricket noise is. <laughs> I have ghost sound as a, as a spell. <laughs> doesn't actually have to make it himself. He just magics it. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> I do it all myself. It's not magic at all. I don't cheat. You cheat. You're a cheater. <laughs> No, just uses the actual animals. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've recorded. I've recorded Nils uh, sounds <laughs> into my magic uh, recording jobber, and then I just on my cell phone. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Your magical Listen, technology. Board. Technology is nothing short of magic, anyway. So that, yes, there I, you I, go. I, totally I have, true. I have a, that's how I do go sound. Well. Moving your way down, uh, the explorers reunite uh, at the uh, the laboratory level, um, where Nil has been poring over uh, a uh, well, certainly still exotic, but no longer terribly unfamiliar machine. What's that? Mm. Oh man, we're gonna fire it up again. Eels. Yeah, yeah, let's do Eels. it. I don't know if we have time right now, but don't you need a thing to? We're working on it. Oh, yes, mean? yes, we are. <laughs> Working on it. Oh. I mean, you want to make sure he's all right. Who? Corbo. Oh, no, he's fine. Gee, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> he got kind of ripped The apart. lack of empathy is so strong. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just want to make sure he's in there before you go using it. Hmm. Oh, he's definitely in there. Well, yep. I can, you know, make sure. Just hold up, Naji. Um, I don't really want to hear what Borbo has to say right now, actually. Um, he's probably in a bad mood. It's best if we just... There's been a couple days. Um, <clears throat> it might take him a little longer to cool off. <laughs> You've been over here shaking him like he's a fish in a bag. Well, we did. I, I did send him into a room that we knew was probably very dangerous. You know... Sometimes you just get a feeling about these things, and I feel like he might be a little upset at the moment. So we need something. I was originally, and I look over to the uh, guy that came down with us. I, um, yeah, I have changed my mind. Um, it's gonna take like half a step, kind of unconsciously <laughs> away from Nell. Carmen doesn't seem to really be cognizant of it, but just kind of, it's just what happens. 
And I have studied. There are other vessels that have, uh, if they punch or if they try and run, they will be slow and soft. So that might be a better, better option for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> if you get if a if a if a, a stuffed bunny rabbit gets violent, that's okay. It will do no harm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. The motivation <laughs> becomes very clear. If you wanted, I could have picked one up while we were in town. I mean, they got a couple kids' toys at the general store. This one has an innate power. I can feel it. Isn't that right, Iris? You said I, I very mean, special. I mean, she doesn't age. Right. All other stuffed animals age. This one does not age. I, I don't think that's... <laughs> I, don't I think, think that's, that's correct. Right. I think you're uh, totally right. <laughs> Calvin right. knows what's up. So I'm just going to p- put the string on the board for my own sake here. We're going to take the weird machine that put the goblin soul in the crystal into the fish, and we're going to put the goblin soul that was in the crystal into the bunny that came with the phrasman that just woke up after a thousand years nap sent by the lady of judgment of all souls. Her name is Annika. Monica. That's the plan. The bunny. See, now you're getting it. Calvin mm-hmm. flips over a board, and there's already a bunch of string. <laughs> okay. See, you, you got you connect to some so, dots, man. I'm going to leave you to that, and I'm going to leave the room before you get smited. Oh, I don't think we can do it yet. I think it takes, doesn't it take a while to do the machine? Uh, it takes a fair bit. You, it, it, was, it was like a downtime activity. So okay, it's, yeah. it, like, it would take you like a little bit of time. Well, we may have to do it later since we have company. Okay. I'm not going to be here when that happens well. because you'll get smited. Because I'm pretty sure you're going to make Phrasma real mad. That's okay. But best of luck with you. I have a Phrasma, so I don't think she will get very mad. But Phrasma <laughs> said it's okay. I, I, can't, I can't be anti Phrasma. I got a Phrasma friend. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> oh, I'm not oh, going to no. be involved in oh, this. Oh, no. We've made, I don't want to make no races. That's not I, good. <laughs> wouldn't that be sacrilegious instead of racist? It's sacrilegious, yeah. <laughs> Best of luck no, with all your plans. I'll be over in the rooms that way that yeah. aren't here with this weird machine. Let's go see what treasures there are in the hidden room. You make your way down through the vaults. Um, Hi, Nick. How you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> Nick's doing enjoy- great. He's I'm apparently- enjoying the show, man. I'm just back I, here watching. I just read the chat. Apparently, Nick is stacked up with three villain points, y'all. We're about yeah. to get smited. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Just, no, you will no. Be, I, I, don't worry. I, I, I have them well in mind. It's true. You do You do only roll ones into fives with villain points. So they're. I just need to make sure the monster can hit you on fives. <laughs> yeah, so totally. then it'll be fine. I'm, Which it can. We'll start a fight, and Link will show up, and he'll drop a woe, and Jen will die again. 13 woes in a row. Let's see it happen. Aroku-san. There's Why do number I say one. Words? There's number one, Why do baby. I say words? <laughs> Wait, we were planning a woe, though. I think someone promised a woe at the beginning. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I say words. I say words, and I enact things. They All were right. talking about it in show discussion. I knew this was going to happen. He was, he was threatening it. He was threatening it the entire time for yeah. so long. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to roll three 20s, one shot the boss, and it's going to go to waste. And that's the woe. Aroku-san, <laughs> I woe don't to you. have the points for a villain point today, but apparently it isn't even needed as the GM is full. A promise was made, a pact unfulfilled, a button pressed, perhaps a machine even tapped, and best, and you best know a woe comes upon ye. Mm, yep, I'm ready. The ones uh, are the best. Indeed. Uh, moving through this, uh, moving through the um, trophy room. The trophy room, exactly. Uh, and you're moving up to the door, and you can um, you see a uh, looking closely at the plans, even like with the plans in front of you. No. That says. C- can I play this? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, Calvin busts out the plans today. Now see, this is what happens when you ain't got me on adventures, y'all. You miss you miss really important details that they don't want you to find. If you look right here and right here is where all the s- hidden symbolism in this door is. And if you just press on this part, and you press over here, and you press over here, then suddenly the secrets of the the vaults are gonna open up to you. But y'all, y'all left me. <laughs> to do whatever it was I was doing for them couple of days. <laughs> Which I'm sure was very important. Very important stuff. You have missed many opportunities for 
But this is why you get this is how you get the secrets open is you gotta have me around. This is true. And so I hope that <laughs> that with that speech, I can open this door. I mean, it takes you a minute because you're like. Because I have to explain to everyone how course, the door works. And also it's like, and the door, which is right there. Somewhere. No, Calvin sees it. Hang on, hang on. Uh, oh, 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 down here. And you follow the instructions and like you, you really have to look and you have to know it's here. Like this door is incredibly well concealed. One, one second, hold on. Uh, with a six on the die plus eight on my deception, I want to make it seem as though I knew where that door was the whole time. And I knew how to open it exactly right. I don't think that's going to do it. What I don't think that, that even beats I, my... I, I, that doesn't beat my party... <laughs> that doesn't beat my dis perception DC. DC. I think if the party believes you just as much as they did They always do. They, the they, 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 about as much as they always do. Um, the door opens. It is a... If a room were to be described as cozy, that is this room. Um, it is fairly small. But shelves line the walls with all various amounts of sheets of folios, uh, esoterica, and in particular, uh, a large book, um, which is sort of set on one side of the wall. It looks like what's mostly here are actually documents. Secret documents that they didn't want us to find. Well, demonstrably, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, if you start kind of going through the... Uh, Going through the what's actually in here. Um, go ahead. Uh, is, is who's who's actually going to start looking through stuff? Definitely. Two of you. All right. Great. Um, so, uh, book or folio? Book. Book for Calvin. At least I'll start folio going through documents. for Corwin. All yeah. right. Perfect. Uh, and you start going through things. So first off, the book. You pull that book open, and the. The, the book itself uh, is it's actually quite sizable. And so in Calvin's hands, to Calvin. it's big. Um, the, uh, the, the cover itself, this book is old, like really, really old. And you open the cover. The cover just has sort of like an embossed skull kind of worked into it. So it looks nice and creepy. Uh, you open Sweet. the front cover, and the title of the Neil, book come look. is called The Whispering Reads, um, which is, you know, seems suitably creepy. Uh -huh, I've never quite uh -huh. heard of this book. Um, but the next page you come to is actually an introduction by the author. And I shall read it to you. Oh my gosh, the glasses. Yes, the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> New character alert, y'all. Here we go. Salutations, fellow hunter of the dark. What you hold in your hands is my seminal work, a combination of history, investigative treaties, and supernatural dossier of that most enigmatic and shadowy scourge upon the land the cult of the outer god Nimbaloth. This shadowy cult has proven most elusive to authorities, both of the sanctic and secular varieties, causing great strife to the good people of Avastan. It is specifically because of their unknown practices and powers that they have been able to dodge justice for so long. I am proud to say that this work will bring their mischief to an end. By shining the light of truth upon their shadowy practices, my intent is that this tome will serve as a formidable aide-de-camp for hunters of evil across the lands and throughout the coming years. While this first edition printing is of a limited run, I am confident that the good that will be done with the contents will quickly lead to additional runs until every Templar chapter and police ministry has a copy of this most useful volume. Be you a temple hunter, imperial investigator, or fellow theoretical scholar, take the fruits of my labor within these pages and bring the light of truth and justice to every corner of the empire. Signed, Magistrar Annabel Brightmore, College of the Occult, Imperial University of Taldor, 3977 AR. Neil, 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 Neil. We gotta keep this one secret. <laughs> and, I, and I take out my canonical cell phone that we have already established in this episode, and I start snapping pics so I don't have to give this to the authorities. I mean, I think that's Did he one read week. that out loud? Did he read it out loud? No, of course not. No way. No uh, way. The cop's eyes get like The cops super are around. Big. I would never, ever, ever read something like that aloud. I mean, the cop is here. If he can't can, read. That's a book on how to hunt down these people. But it does that, have all their secrets. <laughs> So you start going through this book, and this book actually appears to be a exactly what the introduction said. It's like they, they are designing to write down all of the Cult of Nimbaloth's practices, 
where it all happened, how Nimbaloth has impacted the world, and what sort of, of, of uh, I suppose you'd say, like practices and also uh, powers could be gained from that, and what you could do to turn it around back on the cult. Um, and in fact, as you start reading this, um, you see it start to kind of like, there's a sort of pattern here. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give me, I'll take society, I'll take, uh, uh, you have any kind of like lore academia, I'll take any sorts of stuff for you, Calvin. You I have? have lore astrology, lore spirits, society, lore atari, and arcana. Ironically, lore astrology will work for this yeah. if you want to use right. it. Acting as if on, I can see what that dice says from here. On, honestly, it's a uh, it's the same as society, so this is the same. Sully, plus 10 hey here. man, I mean, I was gonna buy Nick a villain point too, but it's scary in here now. Bryn, go beat up these guys. Yes! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Having swapped my leads back, likely to call an off instead of the funny betting thing. Uh, Thank can you, I pretty good. toss in my reaction to get a plus one? Uh, you can, sure. So plus one to your roll. All right. Well, that's a 13 so, on the... So what are your leads now? Uh, called Nimbaloth and mm. where whatever these relics are going to. Called Nimbaloth and who framed Roger Rabbit. Correct. Or it's much cooler 90s counterpart, Cool World. I'll call it the seal to the lower levels. That will work. Uh, right. So it's a 13 on the die plus his one plus my 10 for a 24 on either society or lore astrology, whichever you would prefer to describe. So you start going through this stuff and you learn, um, as as you're kind of going through this book, you learn a few useful things uh, that start to kind of jump out at you. Um, in particular, the Nimbaloth seems to have a lot of ability. Uh, there, kind of Nimbaloth revolves around the, the being the ultimate predator as you go through this. You can see this this sort of constant thing to the fact that a, a sort of a, an, an act of worship that Nimbaloth's cultists will do is to consume a predator that has recently eaten something. Yeah, top of the food chain, baby. Exactly. It's very <laughs> top of the food chain, um, which is probably why it appealed to Nil so, or so early on at first. Um, the uh, But look, going through here, you can see that there's actually sort of predative techniques that you can use by drawing on these powers, most of which seem focused on undead, especially incorporeal undead. However, the author goes out of her way to identify the servants of Nimbaloth, foremost of which are wisps. And one thing about wisps is that they sort of share this immunity to magic, their nature of that is so intangible that most magic just doesn't work on them. Super annoying, by the way. However, there is, through these stories, a backdoor that you could use to kind of sidestep into their connection to Nimbaloth to be able to attack them directly. I knew it, there were secrets. Um, looking through this, uh, it's a simple, it's a simple activity to sort of step into that back door and then gain access to be able to strike them from this dangle. Um, in addition, uh, there are other powers that you could use to target incorporeal undead you find. Uh, you could also be able to um, cast certain types of spells out of this, um, in particular things that focus on invoking paranoia or fear into your enemies. And the... Um, Let's see here. What else we got? Of course, you can always use the book as an excellent reference source to go pull up information about Nimbaloth. As you read this, um, you're going to uh, you're going to gain a point of insight, kind of going here and looking for this. And you can go ahead and leverage that insight in various non-specific ways. But some ways are actually quite specific, such as the ones that I just told you about. Um, the uh, other thing is that as you are kind of reading through this, why don't you give me a will save? <laughs> what was the hero point you got? Oh, yeah. We just uh, got from Sully, it says, I hope this works. Uh, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> <laughs> I love That's that a, one. It's a very shadowing. It's a very <laughs> same nil. words. Yeah, very nil uh, as well. Uh, that's another 13 on the die for a total of 23 for my will save. 23 for your will save. All right, very good. As you read through this, um, you come across something else. Um, and this something else is 
sort of again another suggested technique for the more super the more aberrant and supernatural servants of Nimbaloth, where you can sort of trace a hermetic pattern uh, with your arcana, which almost acts as an anchor, and it can actually be used to directly hamper uh, and uh, agents of Nimbaloth that sort of rely on that incorporeal connection to the outer goddess herself. Um, and sort of like you're using the connection to shackle them to the real, to make them more vulnerable. Uh, that also seems like a useful ability that might be handy. And all these are all these are possible like spells or techniques that I feel like I could. You totally could. Yeah, like okay. it's a simple matter of like, it's almost like you're invoking knowledge of the book to go and do this. Got it. Um, and, and is this required knowledge of magic or? Nope. Uh, I mean, uh, the the pattern is going to require some arca arcane or occultism expertise to use, but it kind of functions as like a quick re as a quick ritual. That's okay. kind of how it how it functions. Just wondering because then other people can also learn it. Right. If they don't have magic. That's true. Such as your other intellect focused friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me teach you the secrets. <laughs> God, I'm um, learning more stuff from Callum. If you yeah, what is happening? <laughs> If you want to share this knowledge around, who's going to be interesting enough to who, who's going to be interested enough in reading that book? Yes, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah, can. Yeah. What are words? Let me read. The, let me read this cookbook to you, bud. <laughs> um, the book spider. appears to be quite old, and in fact, d judging from the date, it apparently dates back to the heights of the Talden Empire uh, over seven hundred years ago. So the Earth was only uh, 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 <laughs> it was only like three hundred years old. We're good. The um, uh, this Society appears, the, 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 according to the introduction, it appears the intent was to mass distribute this book to serve as a uh, sort of like a, a go-to manual on how to defeat the cult of Nimbaloth. But uh, you all have never heard of this book, uh, and apparently there were no more runs that were made after this. This also kind of like flies in the face of what Iris knows about it and what Drevin knows about it from his Serenite connection, um, which is that... The modern way of taking the Cult of Nimbaloth is to hide the evidence of it and deal with it in the shadows and not spread knowledge of it. So the fact that this book was like, let's collect knowledge about Nimbaloth and spread it, it seemed to, like something happened where that was a vast changeover. It's like, don't do this. This is either the, the church shut it down or the cult stopped it from being distributed. Or One of this two. is a very bad idea. Um. Yeah, Iris is uh, absolutely not going to read or touch that book. And uh, I'm afraid that once we're done here, I'm going to have to take it away from you. You would. Did they find another one? This... It's got some info on dealing with things here. He... Once we're done with the vault in Belcora, the eyes... we can get rid of it. The eyes of empty death cannot be looked into. If you look into them and they look back at you... You get sucked into eternity, and now you can never escape. Here's a problem, kid. You've been talking to too many cops. That's what the cops want you to think, man. They want you to keep. They want to keep you away from the secrets. Huh. I thought they found another devil's guard. No. No. If it's a book on the cult, we're burning it at the church. Not yet. Not right now. This will. See, Corbin gets it. Finally coming around. It's useful in the moment. Once we deal with Belcora and what's going on here. We don't know how far down this place goes. We don't know what's going on here. Once we deal with whatever this is, yes, get rid of it. So provided it's not useful. So Corin and Nil both went and learned the the the, the techniques, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, cool. Uh, roll me a uh, quick will save for the both of you. That is a twenty total. Okay. That is a twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. What? It was eleven. You have a better will save than I do. Yeah, plus 11. I'm wisdom, dude. Yeah, that's Calvin how I do medicine. Oh, wisdom. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I got high wisdom. Calvin's just real smart. He ain't, he ain't too wise. <laughs> Calvin has no wisdom whatsoever. <laughs> no, I got high wisdom because um, uh, medicine. So yeah. while Calvin is going through the book, uh, we have our uh, good, friend, good investigator friend Corwin starts going through the folio. And you start looking through these papers, and you find a couple of things. First off, you find is a journal. Clearly, Belcora's journal. And it is a, you're basically reading like a Reddit rant when you go start reading this thing. It is 
Those damn Absalom people ruined my family's name, kicked me out. I was minding my own business, worshiping an evil outer cult, and they kicked my family out. And I had to grow up in a swamp, curse Absalom. Stealing my jobs. We will go. I will have my vengeance. And they will never know what's happening. It's literally just like a total rant of a mad woman. Kind nope, of just, no punctuation to be yeah. found. Yeah, I'll have you know in my summation of notes of that is Belcora's journal. She's a Redditor. Underlined. That's it. <laughs> I just dropped my pencil. No offense to people who use Reddit. I use Reddit. Reddit's great. There is a specific There's Redditor a stereotype, stereotype yeah. friends. We all I know called this. it a Reddit rant <laughs> yeah, for yeah, a right. reason. All righty. Well, and one thing, though, with the journal does go into derogatory is, is it starts yeah. talking <laughs> about the construction of the abomination vaults themselves. And again, this is a rant, so it doesn't really go into too many details. But what you do find mention of is something about flesh warping laboratories, arenas where <clears throat> enemies and creatures were pitted against each other, um, prisons, torture chambers, um, and also something of concerning a links to the dark lands. The uh, vast underground subworld existing beneath the crust of Galarian. I to be knew fair, it. <laughs> not exactly a surprise. You dig deep enough, you'll get there. No, well, apparently she did. Um, and uh, they kind of just show up everywhere. <laughs> we turn, turn around, Nils just got a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> There's like five or six just in Taldor, yeah. like in the, the city. Um, and one other thing it mentions is uh, way down at the bottom, a great temple where once the empty death herself brushed against this fragile world. Um, apparently there is a rare and, well, profane, I suppose, place devoted to Nimbleoth herself far deep at the bottom of the Abomination Vaults. Um, there is also some mention of uh, various minions, but she refers to them sort of like not really by name, but sort of by mass, uh, implying that she seems to have quite a few, or if she doesn't have a large number, she at least doesn't really care about them very much. Call them like femoids and crap. <laughs> Just <laughs> totally like dehumanizing any of them. Reddit rant, actually. Brainlet. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. the, well, the only, the only brainlet that she actually mentions by name uh, would be uh, her amusingly vain apprentice, Vola Garazne. Uh, which uh, she mentions as uh, the only useful thing to ever come out of that meddling community of upstart drow below. Wow. <laughs> so she's racist too. Great. <laughs> real, real. Belcor like... is a real piece of work. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, but um, aside from the journal, there is a folio containing her notes on the construction of the gauntlet. Hmm. Uh, the gauntlet itself. Um, a few things kind of pop out to you uh, when you kind of read over the gauntlet. Um, in particular, uh, and this probably isn't too terribly surprising, uh, the gauntlet is indeed imperishable. Um, you have noticed that it does not take damage, be it from the ravages of time, be it from the direct impacts of massive force, be it from Drevin's hammer or even the Bonk. thrashing of a purple worm contained within it. Uh, the walls, the floors, the ceilings, the structure of the gauntlet itself is imperishable and does not ever decay or take damage. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, that was your question. Next try. Right. That would explain why Almost Harazma had. Got hates him. it. <laughs> uh, we were on one of the floors, I remember. It was mm -hmm. not the purple worm, and it wasn't the most recent one with the... The so, so probably the library the then, maybe? Yeah, so was the library also preserved? Like, all the stuff that had been added so, seemingly after... So the chairs and the tables and stuff like that <laughs> that had been carted in there, um, those did not appear to be protected. It's only the structure of the gauntlet itself. Got it, okay. Um, and it appears that the residual presence of Nimbaloth touching the world is what is being channeled up through the gauntlet and leading to it being so powerful, is that the construction of it uh, is really channeling this, pulling this energy that of Nimbleoth once touching this area and channeling it upward to go and create this imperishable structure. And the, this applies to the gauntlet itself, not to the abomination vaults in general. So it's only the gauntlet rooms that seem to have this imperishability. Um, However, you do find notes on the uh, powers of the Gauntlet. And one thing is particularly interesting, that the Gauntlet powers are actually, it turns out, quite limited. Sort of. 
As it currently stands, the power that is drawn up is being very inefficiently focused by the lens structure of the gauntlet. Even though Volok was able to create some spectacular lenses, they are still simply mundane glass. And they're able to focus the gauntlet's power, but only locally, and it takes quite a while to bring enough power together to create any kind of effect. And these effects would be something such as being able to raise the dead, such as what happened in Otari Cemetery, or even to teleport creatures um, to a uh, to the uh, <laughs> gratings from Nimble Slaw. Thank you, Asane Two Two One. Um, Indeed, that should be the name of that power, Greetings from Nimble Sloth, because that teleports a monster directly anywhere that, mo that the, uh, the gauntlet can see. Um, however, it speaks of an array of magically constructed lenses that can much more efficiently go and direct Nimbleoth's power and extend its, the, it, the, uh, its effects, not just locally, but all the way to Absalom. And while it could take, it takes a month to recharge the power after they've initially been used, once these lenses would be in place, you would be able to use it almost every single minute to fire these powers off. And their powers themselves would be tremendously worse. So instead of simple shambling zombies and skeletons, the amount of undead power that could be put together could create some truly terrifying monstrosities. Um, it's not surprising that this could indeed bring the city of Absalom to its knees, especially if it was caught unawares. Even the great city of Absalom would be no match for this. Yeah, because you send a bunch of monsters, kill a bunch of people, raise a bunch of the dead people that you just killed. There's now more things killing people, raise a bunch of now dead people. Rinse and repeat. Some Infinite money glitch. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, also being able to just kind of like teleport like monsters. Like you can teleport some crazy powerful things. The Scalthrax is basically topping out about how strong you can do it. Yeah. Uh, the light, the, the amount of power isn't strong enough to pull anything of any greater life force than that. But with these magical lenses, it would be entirely possible to truly transport some terrible horrors. So It didn't seem like those were made up here but there's do they seem like there's plans for them in here or? there are plans and they are it appears uh, as the plans are laid out that you actually um it's not like they were in the middle of researching these these lenses appear to have completed plans and may very well exist mm. there's no telling how close belcora was to realizing her final ambition uh before the rose guard showed up and put a stop to her hmm so here's what you do. You buy a warehouse in Absalon under a different name, teleport about a hundred of those things over the, over the course of a, over a little over an hour into the warehouse, and then have them all go just attack in a big wave. I mean, it is kind of an obvious effect of a giant blue beam. Yeah, it's, it's not it's super not, subtle. Yeah, but if it doesn't do anything the first time, they're like, it's we like should go investigate that tower and see what's happening. It occurs to you that, you know, Belcora might have might have had plans for that. I mean, you saw, like, models of Absalom yeah. City, right? Of, like, what to do with it. She was making deals with the Thieves Guild. Yeah, she, we, was, she was keeping all of her options open. We saw those for a brief moment yeah. before blackness <laughs> and fire. And then a giant wooden fist. And then a, a giant second fist. giant wooden fist. No, no, it was the same one. <laughs> it was the same one. Uh, um... But the um, there's one other thing that you find of interest. I, I know what you're talking about now. It took me a second. I was like, fire, fist, what? Oh, right. right. That time I fireballed the entire party. Oops. <laughs> my bad. To be fair, you also fireballed the golem. You did. And myself. You, and yourself. You were you, you, the king of indiscriminate. That's it was right. great. Um, we're all equals here. You do find one other thing of interest, and that is that there is indeed a network of teleportation circles that were set up throughout the dungeons to navigate around, and that as part of the maintenance plan for these is a ritual called Awaken Portal that you could use to turn on the magic that was has long since leaked out of these portals, assuming that the circle is still in one piece, and potentially be able to zip out to the vaults as needed. And the ones we found so far have been in one piece. Uh, except for the one on the first floor. The first, yeah, the, yeah. One, the first floor one we didn't find. We found second, third, and I think I don't think we found the one on the first, well, fourth floor yet. I don't uh, think we found one there yet. You didn't, but you basically saw where it was in a vision, so if yeah. you get a chance to look for it, you can totally find it. Yeah. 
Um, but that seems to have uh, kind of encompassed a fair bit of our um, a fair bit of our uh, research here and research time. You, you spend like probably a good hour going through all this stuff and notating all of this information. Um, it's uh, it seems to be a uh, a sort of a, a common like like it, it's it, it's fascinating reading honestly uh, to to find him see what actually happened. But as you are kind of going this hour kind of maintains. You kind of, this sort of presence seems to start weighing kind of heavily over you all as you work. Um, Iris and Drevin don't seem to notice it, but the three of you, um, it, it, it's almost as though something is looking over your shoulder as you're reading. And then it's that thing is looking over your shoulder and leaning on your shoulder at the same time Calvin as you're reading. always feels like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very small. It's big, brother. And also very paranoid. Your, uh, <laughs> yeah, your feet feel heavy uh, and your your heart races a little bit. You can't quite exactly place the reason, but you you feel as though something is watching you, and there's something about what's going on right now is there is a... Um, you feel uneasy. Um, it's almost like you shouldn't be Cal reading that stuff. Caldum. No. Caldum. I feel a presence. This may be our calling. <sighs> a sane 221, there is no I in team, but there are five eyes, and I don't care how big the room is, I cast fireball. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the same number next of eyes as fire, as the number of party members that you can hit with. Next a level, baby. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I get to do that. You got more bead. When they say that, I'll regretfully open myself up for a hot minute oh, and see boy. if I can feel it. <laughs> um, you check with your psychometric resonance and you um, interestingly enough don't really feel anything going okay. on right here. What? At least whatever's, whatever they seem to be acting a little weird about, uh, there doesn't appear to be any kind of psychic residue behind it. Is there anything worth looking at in this room aside from two books? <laughs> Things you can't do anything with? Two books, lots of papers, and unfortunately, like, for Drevin, this is like the most anticlimactic room you have ever I'm seen. I'm just in your watching life. the door. That makes sense. I'm possibly sleeping on my hand. <laughs> uh, what language is that? Is the big book that I'm reading written in? The big book is written in uh, Taldane, in uh, an older dialect of it, certainly. Uh, but it's it's called it's it's common Taldane, uh, yeah. and it's it's entirely understandable. Uh, Belcor's notes are written in Aklo. Uh, which it's almost like she chose Aklo to write the book in just really just kind of out of sheer rebellion for the common language of Absalom. Yeah, where she, she wanted to make up. herself look smarter. Yeah, exactly. As Absalom, Redditors do. Absalom's the most recent city. I'm going to go with the oldest language. I'm going to write in Sanskrit. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, really, you think? Hmm. <laughs> I like this. I like this version of Belcora that's like an incel Redditor, like nightmare person <laughs> that we all just hate. <laughs> well, she made a master plan on how to deal with the heroes when they show up and then still died. Yeah, so. still, still got wrecked. Uh, I mean, to be fair, she didn't, like, wait at the bottom and send progressively stronger waves of enemies no, she to go fight up. the heroes. She just showed up at the top and was kind of like, all right, let's do this, and then, like, just died. And they got bodied. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, I forgot that the... I need more minions. <laughs> I forgot that my minions are supposed to weaken you before you get to me. Oh, no. Wait, I attack the heroes when they have all their highest level spell slots. Wait, no, yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Neil. So I'm I'm gonna write on I'm gonna write the pages on this side. You're gonna write the pages on this side, and then we're gonna flip, and then that way we can copy the whole book. Cause I think these guys want to steal the book from us. Hmm. Well, and this might be useful information if we ever want to attack a continent or something. It's hidden information. Of course, it's useful. Exactly. Stuff the stuff the establishment don't want us to know. There has been something on my mind all day today, actually, though, that you might be able to help me with. <laughs> Iris, is it your is it your centipede? No, that's on her head. I, they might be able to help, but I'm looking for a seven-letter word. Uh, it says a humanoid creature that drinks blood. We have found a puzzle. Vampire. No, no. I don't think it would be that. Maybe we have found a leech. A puzzle book. Now, leech ain't long enough. Leech. That's probably it. I'll write it in. Okay. okay. I think okay. seven letters. How many keep E's are you mind, putting in there? Keep in mind. Leech. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Drevin, how many, how many letters are in leech? We found... Don't, he yes. don't know 
Okay. That's See, exactly he's got it. what we need. Um, we have found a puzzle which I think will answer many of our questions. Irish thinks. Yes, it's no. very interesting. It's teaching me all about all of the things I haven't gotten to learn since I've been in the boneyard all these years. Where'd no you get leeches it? in the boneyard. Mm. Oh, it was uh, in the library. Le- leeches. It has a very colorful cover. <laughs> You know, when we were getting the book and that guy went behind the counter to, to go get the ancient the, the, the ancient tome, there was this really colorful book sitting on his counter and it wasn't like, it was kind of written in already, so it was sort of used, but it had all of this useful information. It looked like somebody was working on it. I like yes. your style, kid. Yes. You she got has smarts. found puzzles. That we need to solve in in order to it's just unlock. Mad, it's just mad libs. <laughs> Next time you find yourself toward uh, Tambly's fishery, ask her for Finley's finders. You'll love it. I paid for it. Did you? Well, I left him something. She'll give you that one free. It comes with crayons. <laughs> Is mosquito about seven letters? It could be mosquito. Oh wow, M- you're right. Mosquito. Okay, I'm, okay. Are we changing our answer? I don't know. <laughs> Let okay. me think about it. It's not humanoid at all. <laughs> <laughs> Neither's leech. Unless oh. we count Bullock. Dre- Mosquitoes right. could be humanoid. Dre- Drevin's got it, I think. How do you spell Bullock? Um, Cameron is has kind of been sitting. I forgot he was here. Horrendously <laughs> bored in the choke room. Are we like ready to go? To You're the one that wanted to come sword? along. Yeah, but I mean, this is taking a long time. We can we can we go can now. We can just go with the sword. We can go now. It's okay. We have the puzzle, and we have all of the forbidden knowledge that I will never look at, and will try not to think about, and will absolutely burn as soon as I possibly can. Calvin, we'll go over that ritual stuff with me. <laughs> Remember, I put the puzzle away, but I'm going to turn the puzzle over, start writing on the back of the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go over the ritual stuff with Calvin just to figure out how it works, the week and whatever her minions and stuff are, mostly, yeah. just out of spite for you. Um, and uh, as you uh, kind of go through this, uh, Corwin, your chest kind of starts to start to hurt uh, and kind of ache a little bit, kind of absentmindedly kind of rubbing at it. Um, Nil has a bit of a headache coming on. Um, but Calvin it's, feels great. Calvin, yeah, you're, you're kind of doing all right. You're like, you're raring to go. This is so cool, man. Look That's at right. all this great stuff. Um, and you start uh, kind of moving your way through, uh, kind of making your way down through the vaults. Um, it doesn't take you too long. You come down through the uh, the, the platform uh, over the lake down on the fourth level. And you um, kind of take your way down, take the stairs over, and right where you left it uh, is the altar of Nimbaloth. Uh, uh, it's in pretty rough shape ever since Drevin got done with it, that's for sure. <laughs> Dolphin is seven letters. That could be, yeah, that could fit. We yeah. only got mosquito. I did not have enough room for the mosquito part. The cue's silent. Yes. That explains it. And <laughs> the, uh, the, the, you feel the artifacts almost being drawn to this kind of toppled altar. Um, and uh, it seems that this is the place where the Rose Guard's relics could be left uh, to dispel the barrier leading further into the vaults. What was her lovely companion's name? Carmen. 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 It's very close to Corwin, so I keep forgetting it. Oh, fair enough. Nope. The same number. I just of letters. think Carmen San Diego. Me too. Where in the world is he? Carmen, it might be better for you to wait just outside the door Please. for this. I'm put... not letting the sword out of my sight. Well, go put it on the altar then. That's All where right. Put the rest of them. Uh, Carmen moves up uh, and kind of puts the sword on the altar, and a uh, sort of a a humming seems to us kind of move out from echo about the room. Um, You can hear the spirits of the area kind of responding to the presence of this artifact. And it's not like a, like, like a fearful or an anger. It's almost of a, of an exultation as these relics of the Rose Guard come. Because don't forget, these spirits are the spirits of Belcora's enemies that were trapped here, that have sort of inadvertently formed this barrier. Um, as you place the remaining relics, which I'm assuming you do, mm-hmm. um, the, uh, the, this sort of crescendo seems to rise up and become higher and higher. And as it sort of rises, the light level of the room kind of flickers and you feel again like an overpressure kind of build in this room. 
uh, kind of almost making you take a step for a bit. The lights seem to dim down as this oppressive, almost pressure continues to build as the art, the altar itself is sort of swelling with this glowing blue light. And as this crescendo reaches its pitch, something breaks. And all of that noise, all of that pressure drains away as though a dike has burst and the reservoir has flown down. And you find yourselves almost reeling. And the walls about you seem to be lost in shadow. Um, all about you is just this blackness at the barriers of the room. And you feel this oppressive sort of presence come down. All of you feel it. Um, Nil, Calvum, and Corwin feel a sharp pain on you as well. And descending almost through down from the ceiling out of this is a mass of shadow with almost pinpricked with bunches of eyes, almost like grapes. And swirling through all of this is seven-fingered spectral skeletal hands. And this thing floats down from the top, its eyes kind of poking and looking at every single one of you. And a monotone yet incredibly understandable Talden voice rings out. The loss of Volik was unfortunate, but I shall find another. Belcora will not be stymied, and your journey ends here. And I would say that's initiative. Okay. But first, let me take. A why selfie? don't we take a quick break? Because <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be here for a while. It's gonna be a tough fight. Biblically accurate angel. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Except it's not the be not afraid. It's the be afraid. <laughs> be afraid. And uh, that's a lot of lenses. It's a lot of lenses. That's a lot of corneas. A lot of pupils. Yeah. It's also a lot of fingers. Stand up. Stretch your legs. Refill your drinks. Yummy. And join us back in. This seems that there is going to be one final obstacle before our heroes can make it to the next level. Welcome back, everyone. To. Abomination Vaults on the Undeniably Good Time Entertainment Network, episode 21. The eyes of empty death are upon our heroes. The last barrier, the last obstacle before they make their way further down. But who are our heroes? And are, how heroic are they, really? Why don't we go around the table and find out? We'll start over here. Howdy, I'm Derp, and I play Draven Sorrel, the nearly seven foot tall, the great knoll, the pious puppy, the destruction doggo, the grassy knoll, and the cop. The grassy knoll is a good addition. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one's taken. It was imp it was improvised. It was, it was so, inspired by Calvin. It's so good, uh, which is why I like it so much. Uh, I'm Bobby. I play Calvin Finleybottom. He's the uh, tiny little gnome wizard, uh, and the eyes of Nimbleoth just, just entered the gnome dome, baby. So it's going. It's on. It's on. Like, it's wouldn't on. this be the hex? What? The gnome hex. It's an octagon. The gnome hex. Shh. It's dome. It's, He's it's entered dome. the octagon. The, it's dome. The gnome. Dome. The gnome to gone. It's domish. The octonome. It's gnome. gnome. Octonome. That's a horrible mental image. Uh, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> later. Later. You cast four there, times. There will spells. be there will be spells that do that for me. No. <laughs> there are. Yes. I know. Corwin Obashi, resident field medic at the party, and uh, well, we got the weird elder thing's attention. For better or worse, this can only go good, right? Sure. We're not, we're not going to die. Nope. Oh, it's, just, it's just fine. Just, just roll well. We just figured out how to make it deceptible to magic and stuff. Yeah, that should make it so this right. should be an easy fight. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Over here, we've got Nil Grumman, our resident uh, dwarven uh, druid here for a good uh, monster fights. You know that, like, incorporeal monster thing is not too cool. Honestly, I like the one. I guess it's not really incorporeal. It's, it's not really incorporeal. It's just yeah, kind still, of it's like, just like not as cool. It's, so like, it's partially corporeal. It's very. If you don't have like the fleshy bits, I mean, what are you it's even got doing with your life? It does have eyeballs and hands. It's got a lot of eyeballs. Those it's are fleshy. Corporeal-ish. We have a goal. <laughs> <laughs> Get the eyeballs in the jar. Get one of those eyeballs in a jar. Let's go. <laughs> uh, 
Iris uh, Riss, uh, spirit barbarian, uh, returned uh, Duskwalker, trying to figure out how to spell mosquito. I feel like we got it wrong. Oh dear. Oh, oh, this place is horrifying. And indeed, it is. M I S K E T O. Mosquito. That fits. Oh, it done. Fits. It fits. It Crossword fits. puzzle successful. Mosquito. Thank you, Calvum. Couldn't have done it without him. Uh, but while crossword puzzle shenanigans are going, the rest of you better roll some initiative. Calvum has an 18 intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what his wisdom is. <laughs> I have a huge modifier, so. I'm here for that. 22. <laughs> Brag one, don't 22. You? Look at Nil. You have low expectations of me. I, uh, based off of experience. <laughs> That's 25. 25. Look at this. No, just start over there. Okay. Only an 18. Only. Four on the die. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Okay, fair enough. A four on the die is still an 18. <laughs> 25. Dang, who wants to go first? Uh, probably best I do. As we've established, this monster just rolled up into the gnome dome, baby, and I rolled a 20 on the die, which means I got a 28. Whoa. Dang. All right. Well, All guess right. what? Hey. That's right. Calvin's going first. Hey. That's right, baby. That's Enter the gnome for. dome. <laughs> ah. investigator things, though, I do get my recall. Yeah, knowledge. we actually also have some uh, some exploration activities that we're going. We'll go. We'll sweep around this way. So you got to recall knowledge, right? I was scouting, but it doesn't matter in this case. Everyone gets a plus one, but it doesn't change anything. Does a twenty six make a difference? It does not know. Uh, recall knowledge on this thing. What would it be, good sir? Uh, we're probably going to definitely go with occultism or lore wisps. What you got? Uh, in this case, it's going to be occultism because I'm don't. i not Trevin. What's your bonus? Uh, this is a plus 10. It is my lead, plus 11. Okay. Um, so this thing is, you recognize this thing. It is called a void glutton. Um this That's is a, fun name. a type of wisp, technically. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a bunch of them. It is technically a type of wisp. It is like a wisp the way that, like, dire wolves or dogs. Um, this thing is a incredibly powerful thing. It, it usually takes, like, battlefields and the carnage and terror involved therein to go and draw the attention of these things. But when they show up, their hunger for terror and fear is rapacious, and they are true terrors and menaces. Um, they are very vicious and a immune to most magics, much like their wisp, their wisp things. Um, that's uh, that's what you get out of them. Uh, you do know that they do seem to have this ability to um, trap people by tying them in ectoplasm. But aside from that, their abilities seem to be very straightforward. They want to try and make you scared and eat you. Exactly. Like every other wisp. Um, Calvin, what was your exploration activity? I was also recalling knowledge because I knew where we were going, so I wasn't, I wouldn't, I normally would be checking magic, but I know that there ain't no magic down here. That's so fair. That's fair. Knowledge. You already dug, you got all the magic that was here. That's correct. Um, so what are you going to be doing with your uh, occultism, I guess? Uh, or art, I guess. Definitely art. occultism is kind of what we're going for yeah, here. But, so yeah, I have a plus 10 there. Alrighty. Um, you're going to get uh, a little bit less than Corwin, actually. Uh, but uh, basically the same thing. Void Glutton is uh, what this thing is, and it's uh, a true terror of slaughtered battlefields. Drevin, what you doing? Lore Wisp. Lore Wisp! Yeah, got your Lore Wisp. What's your bonus these days? Plus seven. Plus seven. Okay. I'm not an imp-based character. <laughs> you are not an imp-based character, but having that lore and lore skill definitely helps, makes it yeah. easier. Um, so you know that these things are, there's actually a trick that you've been told that is when you're, these creatures, even though they can be brutally intelligent, uh, they are slaves to their hunger. And you actually know that there is a way of, if you can almost give in to that emotion that drives them, you can actually kind of draw them to you. So being this thing might, if it 
you've certainly fought wisps before that have the ability to fly. The ceiling in this room is 35 feet high. Uh, you might be able to lure it in closer to you if you're able to sort of give in, offer it a piece of yourself, I guess. Um, which, you know, you're not good at faking terror, but, you know, you're kind of feeling a little bit of it right now, so. It is large and about to try and eat us, so. What's uh, Nil doing? I would just be searching. That'd be searching, perfect. And we've got, always good to have somebody searching. I figured as much. <laughs> and what's Iris's thing? I was doing scrying through psychometric resonance. Ah, through psychometric resonance. All right. Um, your psychometric resonance is going to kick off and you are going to uh, be very quickly swamped with some very desperate struggles that took place in this room not too long ago. Um, you remet- you can actually feel the shadow of uh, something that's roughly fish-shaped, about this big. <laughs> Never laid eyes Aww. on it before, but- uh, Poor guy. Sort of like uh, a-, a cautious terror and then blind panic followed by a cut off of emotion. Although not without a rip in the veil like you would expect. Um, it seems as though something happened, but they didn't die, but something very terrifying, uh, followed by a brutal struggle that happened in this room. Um, and you feel at least one death, uh, one that's actually fairly familiar. You feel Mocker die in this room, your psychometric resonance. Um, you are going to be stunned one from this hammer blow of emotions that smashes into your consciousness. But one thing that you do notice is you can see a shadow of one of these things' hands as it reaches for the altar. And you remember in your psychometric resonance, in the visions that you just saw, this thing pick up this altar and smash it into the ground to start this sort of blind panic that Mocker fell into. You feel something is coming from this. Uh, maybe enough to shout out a warning to your friends. Uh, and Carmen has an exploration activity. Carmen's exploration activity is to look up at this thing and scream. I did tell him that we're outside the door. <laughs> I warned you, bud. <laughs> Carmen screams, and not a, ah, kind of thing. This is a scream with no pretension of pure animalistic terror that grips his heart and he's about to the die. sword falls out of his hand and he like collapses onto his knees. It's a good thing he told us about all his future plans and his children that he's going to go back <laughs> to and his tragic story about where he's going. Yeah, he's going to the doll. Lesson matter. learned, bud. You were wearing a red shirt. <laughs> Honestly, this is better than the doll. What's Calvin going to do? Uh, Calvin looks at this. So wait, this thing is medium size or large size? Uh, well, I mean, it's certainly looming before it's, you. It's, but if you take a look at what its actual dimensions are, it takes up. It, it take, doesn't take up much more much more space than Drevin would. But not, this thing has a hell of a presence. It definitely doesn't anymore because Calvin reaches over and touches Drevin's shoulder and goes, "Go get him, bud." And my, so, <laughs> my shoulder? Yeah, bud. I jump. I jump real high. I got ups. <laughs> Wah! Got Athle- the hops. <laughs> Athletics check. <laughs> Athletics check on a f- three. Jump up. That's enough to touch well, you're my not shin. Lo- you're not looking, but you, you might have hit the shoulder. It might be the knee cop. You're not it's Whatever. Doesn't, ma- doesn't matter. I touch him. Uh, actually, I don't even anyway. need to touch him, I think. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I do. Uh, I say, Go get him, bud. And suddenly, Drevin goes... <laughs> and uh, like one of those little uh, pills you put inside of a, a glass of water and it expands into a giant thing. He's you're a little he, dinosaur. He's, a, he's little a little tiny. dinosaur that smells awful. Yeah, but horrible. But uh, yeah, now uh, Drevin is large. Uh, and then secondarily, the I great, will. Great, great Yeah, he's uh, he's the big, great, grassy knoll now. Um, and then big, I, great, grassy knoll cop. I will um, think back on those things that I just absorbed from the book about how to sort of uh, affect wisps with magic, uh, since I kind of know this thing is a wisp, and I will sort of be meditating on that as my uh, th- final action for the round so to this, uh, start thinking about that. So this is a, uh, it's you, you kind of think of it sort of equivalent to stepping sideways. Uh, you're not moving where physically where you are, but sort of mystically you are stepping your point of reference into this conduit that connects this 
Void Glutton to Nimbleoth herself. And you feel like you've stepped into an icy waterfall and your you, goosebumps just run over your entire skin. Your hair stands up a bit. And you feel as though you are noticed by something bigger and far scarier than just what's in this room. And I just go, you enter the gnome dome, baby. I'm, I'm gonna come get you. Um, you'll hear Iris's voice shrilly said, steal yourself against the fear. Um, and this thing will rise up. You're talking to him, right? And it will yeah. reach out one of its spectral hands, which again has no arm attached to it. So it just floats over and wraps its skeletal fingers around that fallen altar. Uh, the relics of the Rose Guard scatter and clatter off of it as it picks this thing up, rears back, and slams it into the center. Um, you all have seen this happen before, uh, the last time you were in this room. Uh, Corwin especially remembers being pulled into this embrace. Um, Iris is able to shout out a word of warning to kind of snap you in a bit, but your chests ache as this thing smashes and cracks start to form out, not just through the floor, but through the air itself. And it smashes down twice, three times, and once more. Um, and you feel again almost falling into this sort of abyss below you. I am going to need some rolls. So, let me take a quick look at the stats everyone's got right now. We've got holes in their soul. Who indeed. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's go with um, Drevin, Nil, and Corwin. are going to have to roll me some dice. Give me a will save. So, nice. 28. 28. 17. 17. That is a 25. 25. Um, with Iris's warning, Corwin and Nil are able to catch themselves. Um, but Drevin is caught entirely unawares, and Drevin finds himself falling downward almost. Um, and you land in what appears to be a... Not so much a a room necessarily, it's a large space, but there are pens everywhere, cages, chains, hooks, meat hooks hanging from the ceiling, and you can sense a presence is here and a chuckling laughter completely devoid of sanity comes and greets you. Um, the eyes kind of circle about um, as Drevin is gone, has fallen to the floor. I didn't mean go that far, bud. <laughs> <laughs> and just the one, eh? No worries. Your warning will not serve you. We can hear that? We, we can all it hear echoes it. out throughout yep. the room. You can all hear that. And in fact, Drevin hears it too. Um, but looking around, uh, Drevin is apparently somewhere else. Um, and as Drevin looks about, the chains and the hooks seem to swing in a spectral wind, almost on their own accord, before lashing outwards to with a cutting swipe. Um, the chains and manacles and meat hooks of the room seem to almost come to life, trying to gouge away at you. Um, why don't you give me a fortitude save? Not 20. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, shrugging up under your armor, you managed to Turns knock out those the are not rusty weapons, chains away. And I'm in full plate. There you go. <laughs> uh, you managed to knock them away um, to a hissing sound in the background. Uh, what are you going to do in your current predicament, sir, massive as you are? Start using my sheer size and strength to grab chains and rip them off of their mounts, throwing them off and just down to the ground, useless now. Give me an athletics check as you try to force your way through this vision. 
And I believe that enlarge gives me a bonus to athletics. I'm sure it does. Because it gives second. me a bonus to damage and other things. Uh, you have, let's see, creatures clumsy one. Reach Natural one. Yikes. Oh, wow. Well, Both that doesn't matter. There's then. a lot of change. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I rip some down. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in fact, ripping some down doesn't seem, there seems to be an endless supply of them. Uh, and they quickly seem, there more of them keep coming. And you find yourself pretty handily overwhelmed. Um, that guy went and sucked driving into a hole in the ground. All right. What's Iris going to do? Uh, well, uh, step number one. Luna Koho Limon! Rage. Mm-hmm. Uh, second action. I'm going to move and try to get away from the rest of the party a little so it can't hit us with something all at once. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll move to the left about 10 feet away from the thing and about 20 feet away from the rest of the party. Okay. And uh, I'm stunned one, so that's all I get. Rage, yep, and you you stun forward as your senses come back to you. Nil, what you doing? Hmm, so I do remember these. Uh, this, I remember last time that this kind of helped. Um, um, it does, it is, as far as I can tell, the same pounding. Like, I still look like I could probably, well, not me, but could knock it over. The thing, is it like kind of the same layout? Are you knock over the um, Same as when I altar? inverted it last time. Yeah. Oh, yes, indeed. He picked it up and just, he didn't like flittle it around first. He just smashed okay, yeah. this back. But it's it. like, but it's on its correct side now. So if I, like, it looks like I could theoretically knock probably, it over. Probably, actually. Yeah, you probably could. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, since it kind of worked last time, vaguely, um, I am going to send out an exploding earth um, again and try and um, slam my staff into the ground and shoot out a bolt of energy trying to jostle the um, altar. Okay. Uh, is that going to... Does that have a damaging effect on anything else in the path, or is it just... Uh, the... uh, no, it's just one creature, um, 46 bludgeoning. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me uh, a nature check to see about how well you can uh, channel that energy onto that altar. I mean, it does have a 1d6 splash, but I don't know if that matters. I would take that damage if I were you. Nice! Okay. Um, that is, uh, what was that, a nature? Nature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that is a 28 on my nature check. Very and nice. then um, uh, splash damage, 1. <laughs> hey, it's damage points damage. on the board is what it is. Right. Um and the total was what now? 28. 28. Um, so, Drevin, the entire area shakes. And you can see, as the chains move and sway away from you, as the entire room sh- shudders, you can see that there is a blue creature in the corner, humanoid, wrapped in rusty chains. Um, kind of similarly to the uh, the Velstrak that you saw in the torture chamber on the fourth floor. But this one... Instead of looking lethargic and bored, this one has eyes that are wide, focused at you, seemingly like mouthing nonsense, uh, and looks quite feral. And it is shrieking at you as these as these chains are apparently being powered by it to rip your body. Um, all right, so Nil cast a spell. What else would Nil um, like to do? And then I would like to kind of, can I like, it's if I have been of the, can I like fortify my mind a bit against the fear? Um, so you, the, that, that what I, Iris is warning you mean? Yeah. Uh, that's what helped keep you from getting sucked down to the same place Draven is. Okay. Um, if you studied the book, you can do any of the ritually things. True. The true. I didn't know if, uh, but I, if, well, I guess I'm just wondering if I think it's very likely for us to get sucked down again, or because it only happened the one time. So I guess after the first fear, I mean, wasn't anyway. it bad enough when it just happened the that one did, time? It, 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 that is for sure true. <laughs> that is for sure true. Um, I'll just on the off chance. Um, I think I might just steady myself a little bit and try and close my mental shields down. Okay. Uh, I'll. Okay, we'll do it that way. I don't way. know if that's a, a thing. You'll you'll <laughs> brace yourself and try. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Corwin. So, stage one here is going to be a question. And that is, could I use crafting to see if there's a, like, 
looking at the altar, does there appear to be like physical cracks spreading across this from the damage Nil's done and that we've done to it in the past with Drevin and Nil? Is there damage to the altar physically visible? It's literally a giant hunk of stone. There's plenty of cracks in it, but none are so deep as the gouges that the seven gouges that this thing's hand perfectly fits into. Um, certainly the surrounding altar is damaged horrendously, but this particular stone altar here, it's literally just a hunk of rock. I'm not looking for ways to damage this. Okay, what you going particularly? for? Particularly. It's a big old chunk of rock on top of a like big slab pile of rubble, really. The slab is pretty smashed from last time. It can't exactly be the most stable thing at this point. I mean, fair enough. Okay. Can I see if there's a point where I could find with, like, just a quick, like, either perception or crafting that I could cause that to become unstable enough that, like, either further damage would make it more unstable? Or... Is the goal to eventually topple it over? Yes. I feel like the you're goal is hinting... to topple it over. Very I'm trying, roundabout way. I'm trying to talk it into, like, can I crafting check this to make it so that the person that has no athletics or way to deal damage to an object can find a weak point that he can actually get in there and do something? Uh, do you have any tools? Uh, I was going to burn supply for it. All right. Um, if you want... Pulls a pickaxe. A, yeah. Well, a pickaxe... <laughs> I was going to pull out, like, a uh, one of the... Uh, what do you call? Like, a, the big chisel. Chisel that they use for, like, statue work. Yeah. And just slam it in there and... <laughs> so a jackhammer. A manual um, jackhammer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll tell you what you can... So, so there's no getting around necessarily. So you could tip it with crafting, but it would basically be like an activity that would take minutes to hours. Um, in the heat of combat, what I'll let you do is I'll let you use crafting to aid an athletics check from someone else with careful placement of the chisel. How about that? Okay, so I would need driving back for that. Well, you need or, somebody well, with athletics. Yeah, you're over there. Uh, Keep forgetting that we have, you have athletics now. I'm oh, still oh, yeah. The I'm, an ex- I'm an expert. I was. You had athletics. Yeah, you did. Eh. Mocker was also an expert. Yeah. So I'll get up there. Do you want me to roll that now or yeah, when it would like, be there? Uh, we can, uh, you can, no, roll it now because you're readying a, um, an aid. Ready an to aid, aid, right? Be, well, the aid's a reaction, technically. It's an, right, aid is oh, fair enough, one sure. action. You'll, you'll action, go there and you'll, and you'll, you'll take two, two actions to ready an aid. One action now. One action now. Okay, what do you want to do with your last action? Uh, last action is going to be a recall knowledge on this thing again. You can do it again. It's just I got a crit succeed to get more knowledge. Okay. Um, You do not get more knowledge. Okay. Just trying all this thing to figure out what's going on in this room. All right, Calvin, what you doing? So I feel like uh, me, I I being Calvin, feels like he is in this sort of area that magic can affect the wisp stronger. It's not so much that. It's more like you are in a – it's like if you're trying to throw uh, like – like a stick at something that's far away and previously there was a cross breeze and now the wind is behind you. Think of it more that way. And so it's way easier to hit it with direct things. Direct things being spells. Correct. Got it. Um, Okay, great. Well, then I'm gonna cast some of my highest level spells. Uh, He sort of looks at his hands and, and the tips of his fingers become little, like, Flames, just the tips of his fingers, and he kind of points with two of them. He goes, "Hey, you entered the gnome dome, baby. Check it out." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he spends all three actions to. Oh wait, actually, I think I have to spell these are different targets. If I do more, what is uh, it? It's it's blazing bolt, or or rather, scorching ray. I think ray. you can hit the same target multiple you times. You can blast him. Uh, yeah, you just do a spell attack roll. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. There's multiple attack rolls. Great. Yeah. So here we go. It does mean it has penalty for each additional ray past the first one on the target. Uh, I don't think it does. No, I don't think so. They increase my multiple attack penalty, but I don't increase it until the uh, until I actually make all the. Because it would be a really bad spell. If yeah. That were the case. Yeah. So each of these are at a plus ten for my attack roll, and let's see how it goes. I'm gonna roll three times. That's a. 14 on the die, an 11 on the die, so 21 and a 24. Does the 21 hit? Uh, the 21 does not hit. Okay. And the 24, is it, you have to get a, these are normal spell attack rolls, right? Correct. Okay, the 20, that neither one of them hit. Wow. Uh, they blast forward, and the first one will go wide, and the second one, a skeletal hand will whip up fast as you can see and catch it and actually snuff the magic in midair. Hope that hurt, bud. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little better. Uh, 26. Does a 26 hit? A 26 with 
the the flow of Nimbaloth at your back will slip through this thing's guard and smash it right in the center bundle of eyeballs. Uh, um, like this thing is incredibly quick. But I did find the number. You did find <laughs> or at least, the but number. At least somewhere, Not your number. Somewhere in the, somewhere in the neighborhood. It's 25 or 26 yeah. while you're in the stance. Somewhere in the neighborhood. Uh, all right, so that is eight damage. It's just 2d6? It's just 2d6. Okay. Yeah. You said it was like one of your best spells. All right, well, it, well, it could have been It, it could have been if, if I hit with all of them, it would have been. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, and that's all your actions? I can't throw a fireball in a room with all my party members because I got yelled at last time. <laughs> 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 they took exception to it for some yeah, reason. So I don't know weird. why. Uh, yep, that was my whole that's my whole turn. All right. Um, so this thing... Well, uh, get on one side of the room. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We got to do tactics. Push it to the other side of the room. And uh, give me a uh, flat check. Me? You. Oh, uh, okay. That's bad. It's a seven. It's a seven. Okay. Um, you uh, feel a, a, a pain kind of punch into you. And um, a sort of almost sort of... You're, you look down and this sort of whitish flame seems to have a lit in your chest um, and a you kind of stumble a bit uh, you feel as though a piece of you is somehow missing and again that oppressive presence uh, kind of looms over you not from the creature in front of you but almost behind you um, and uh, not so much words or language but a feeling of come to me kind of sort of you feel it almost pulling you backwards uh, you are going to be doomed one not great don't like it mm. Mocker loved it <laughs> Mocker had a great a time really fun condition mm -hmm. um, the uh, the void glutton uh, is going to kind of rise up and its hands will move together in a complicated pattern. No, I don't think so. And a, uh, a sort of a, a kaleidoscope of green and blue light will spread out uh, towards Iris. Uh, for a 31. That is not a crit good, sir. That's not what we're looking for. <laughs> he rolled like a three. Yeah. A... Uh, um, uh, this thing kind of spreads out into a pattern and encases Iris, and she feels herself pulled down to her knees as it solidifies into a web of ectoplasm, trapping you to the floor. Um, the thing then just floats around behind Corwin uh, with dragging by this skeletal hand, which will just reach around and close around your head and the top half of your torso with an attack roll. Can I ask a technical question? You may. If, uh, you are immobilized. Board. Okay, uh, that's what that's what I was yeah, asking. there you go. Uh, for the prime sub. Hmm? Alcatraz. Oh, Alcatraz! Thank you so much. Um, and this thing is going to get a only a 17 to hit you. Does not hit. Just goes to reach for a sin. Just you duck you and swing I'm not gonna out of the way. Get out of the way. That wouldn't hit Calbum. Actually, that's not true. It would. <laughs> they would exactly just hit Calbum. Yeah, it would just barely hit me. Oh, I forgot. I told you the number. No, I can't use. I can't use the. I can't use the villain point after the fact. That would have been a perfect villain point too. I'll get you next time. You've got three of them. Don't worry. All right, they will get time. used. Gadget. I promise you. Drevin, um, you see this creature kind of close its arms together in a sort of a savage motion uh, and hiss at you, which might be some kind of words if this thing still had the capability of speech, but the chains, again, will swarm, blocking your line of sight. Uh, why don't you want to give me another fortitude save, unless you want to try to defend with something else. I mean, just taking the brunt of it seems pretty fine by me. Okay. Uh, an 18. Total? Total. All right. Uh, these things are going to latch into you, and um, as they find hooks in your armor uh, and cut into you. Uh, you feel them rip pieces out and the wounds burn. Um, the chains are quite rusty. And uh, you're going to take uh, 14 Tetanus. points 
<laughs> yeah, um, tetanus. <laughs> damage. My man was really excited about Cool Fever. Now he can get really excited about tetanus. No, no, that's it's not nearly across. as fun. I promise no. you. Yeah. Um, and the uh, t- the chains kind of dig into you, and you can kind of hear the cackling laughter of the creature on the other side of the room. Um, and as they dig into you, you feel um, again this kind of burning hole uh, where you were hit once, and it will sort of almost exacerbate and kind of radiate out. You're not entirely sure what exactly is going on here. Um, You've kind of gone out of your way to follow the proper Serenite teachings and not go and dig into matters that are best left unknown. Uh, However... uh, Meddling in it is still bad. Meddling in it is still bad, indeed. Uh, So, but the side effect is you don't really know what's going on exactly. Oh, Sully, cheers, stay hydrated. Oops, there goes your flesh. Cheers. Took a big old sip. <laughs> well, if, you, if you're losing all your flesh, you got to put all the blood back in, so you got to rehydrate. Internal bleeding is fine. It's yeah, it's blood's supposed really to be. Yeah, exactly. Stays, stays right where it's supposed to be. Yeah. All righty. Uh, so uh, you are kind of cut up with chains, but you want to make any kind of uh, other action to get out of your predicament here? Uh, athletics to just push forward, trying to get within reach of this creature. And soak upon hero point for Bobby. Bring them to the gnome. <laughs> dome. He is sick, but he is here in spirit. Go ahead. An athletics check to try and just push forward and get close enough to hit this thing. Give it to me. That's pretty. Uh, cool. twenty-two. Twenty-two. You manage to rip yourself free of the chains and start to move your way through this thing and you can see this thing getting closer it's kind of just in a corner lurking there but you start to move forward you're within striking distance of it do i have actions while i'm here um these are kind of abstracting your actions as you're here if you want to do something in particular that's like different it's basically how do you resist the damage and how do you make progress just making sure Mm -hmm. uh i got uh from uh, uh Corey. i got drain power Every last drop of magic. Sully's mm. favorite hero point. Ooh. That will be very good. Iris, you are currently trapped to the floor. Oh, I hate this stuff so much. Um, and she'll draw in uh, spirits um, from around her, and they will swell her body up with spiritual energy, and she'll attempt to bust out of these bonds. Flexin. Spirit Hulk style. Go ahead and give me an athletics check. It was almost a 20. Yep. Uh, that is only going, I don't like that. I need to get out of these chains. All righty. Yeah, because that, that, that is, that is important. really important, because that was only a four on the die, and I don't like it. Yeah, probably not going to be very good if you do that. I like that way better. That's a 15 on the die. That is a 27, good sir. 27 with a massive swell of effort. You can feel like the these ectoplasmic webs strain and then shatter as you prize yourself free. And you have two actions left. You cannot chain a servant of the Grey Lady. Um, yes, I can. Uh, <laughs> we can try. 5, 10, 15, 20. 25 should get me into flanking with... Um, Worry about the altar first. This thing comes second. We got to get driven back. Oh. Oh, yes, right. And she'll charge into this thing and attempt to, with her body pumped up from the spiritual energy, spin it around like she saw in her vision of uh, when Drevin got uh, the other two, when Drevin got Altamach and Corwin out the first time. All right, so we'll use an assist of craft from uh, Corwin, and you're going to be using athletics. Yep. So I have a plus 17 to this check. The DC is 15. I am an expert in crafting. Nice. How much of a bonus do you get? Plus four from cooperative nature, and I have a plus 13 to crafting. I will give a plus three if I critically succeed. A plus 13 to crafting? Yes. Are you sure about Expanders, that? Expanders, crafters, kid. I have a base plus 12. Yep. 
that's that's correct. Plus yep. four from Int. I'm an expert in crafting. Okay, but you're not you're not using the craft. Having it on you gives you the item bonus. I don't think it does, but why don't you go ahead and roll it? We'll look it up later. That was how my crafting stuff worked. Either way, Tell if it's not, the, it's just a 16. I've got pretty po tools in my pocket, so I'm better at levering this That's what this it thing. says on the track right. builder sheet. That's right. That's how it works. Uh, that's an 18 on the die. You get a plus three. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. I think even without that whatever plus one or two is fine. there, yeah, you fine. That's a success on yeah. just the die. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be a 25. 25. You strain at this thing and push, push, push up, up, up and tip this thing over. Um, and the entire room that Drevin is in will shudder and shake again. And cracks begin to kind of form in the walls. Um, mortar starts to fall down from the ceiling. The creature in the corner doesn't seem to notice. Uh, it's almost as though it's not seeing this thing. It's almost as though it's not really here, um, or at the very least, it seems entirely focused on you. Um, with a Herculean effort, Iris has freed herself, charged up, and tipped this altar. She went super safe. And you can actually feel the sort of the sort of spiritual trap that this thing laid. Um, that is kind of shuddering and breaking. Oh, Drevin, please be okay. Nil. Um, Nil is, I'm going to, uh, with one hand, just cast out just a slight uh, bolt of energy at um, Corwin, which is going to give him guidance. It's just like a little bolt. Um, and then I'll regrip. Zap. Uh, yeah, zap. Sully, when I'm holding a hammer, I feel like I can fix my pipes. <laughs> As a former do-it-yourselfer, still current do-it-yourselfer, I, I understand. Yeah, absolutely. That, that I understand is, that, that is feeling. Accurate. I feel like I can fix anything in my if house, you, but I have a sawzall you, in hand. If you buy more expensive tools, you are better at your job. That's yeah, how you, it works. Yeah, whatever you say, DeWalt salesman. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. No, no. Uh, and, then, um, and then I'm going to basically... Uh, uh, with the power, with, with a like staff slammed down into the ground, it'll just kind of flame up into like all the cracks and of the carvings and um, that are on the staff. It'll just light up, and I will uh, cast a shillelagh. Shillelagh, the s power, the power courses through the staff, and, um, and the the monster carvings, their eyes and teeth kind of glow as each one of them is infused with this power. Corwin. Well, time for second question. He says, as he, is the brooch nearby? Like close to the one that Drevin had? Yeah, that we because we put everything on the altar. Oh yeah, it and got then scattered. This whole thing happened. Yeah, it got it scattered. If you look around, you can see it. It's like over there. You could like it's like with a single stride action, you can move over to it. And get I would it. go over, grab the brooch. Okay. Pick it up, you're over here. Spend the action to step into this weird, ritualistic, like, plane kind of thing. So I'm going to just let you know that because you rolled so well on the lore, you know this thing is not undead and Disrupt Undead won't work on it. It's not what I'm trying to do. Okie dokie. Gonna step into this weird plane. <laughs> Can I vaguely, while in this, can I vaguely get a sense of, like, being able to see Drevin? Not, like, be able to get to him, but be able to get something to him. Because I'm in this weird between planes kind of thing. So you go and step sideways. And so your goal that you're doing is you're going to try to step into the flow. Yes. Which was what would let you throw spells at this thing. Yeah. And you are, as you step there, you're kind of hoping to be able to see if Drevin is here. Basically okay. just, like... The, because we don't know how this weird transporty thing, like, he's just disappeared. Totally true. Maybe um, if I step here, I can see him because so I have an idea and we'll see if it works. You perform this ritual and you feel sort of this slight chill kind of run up your body. Um, you, though, don't see anything else. Uh, there's no sign of Drevin. Uh, you appear to still be in the same room. Uh, but you feel as though you've attracted notice. Um, 
and your chest really hurts in a couple places. About to track more. Uh, and that's going to be a run over, scoop up the amulet, and step sideways, I believe. Yep. Okie dokie. We're going to track more next turn. Hey, Calvum, what you doing? Okay. Um, I think what Calvum is going to do is... Um, thinks really hard about how, where this thing, like he's just like studying where it is, where it's moving. He believes that he can probably uh, roll two dice and take the higher of the two for this attack spell. Um, and then he pulls a random item. Great flavoring. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my flavor. Uh, he pulls a random item from the uh, cat toy jar um, and throws it at the uh, creature very hard. I love with a it. Telekinetic projectile. Let's see. Hey, you're friends with the. Um, you I, th control fate? I think I'm gonna take the 16 on the die as opposed to the one on the die. Probably it seems wise, like so it's probably gonna be better for me. Probably. Um, and yeah, so that uh, that little ball of aluminum uh, becomes very dense. A little ball of what? Aluminum. Never heard of foil. it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Calvum has because oh. he knows secrets that you he don't makes know. Hat, man. Makes hats out of them. That's right. That makes sense. <laughs> Lines uh, actually, he's never it. thought about that. Yet. <laughs> he has his, he's gonna. We'll figure that out later. Um, and then that's three d six of damage. So that's bad. That's bad. Six points of damage. <laughs> it's better than zero, but it is better than zero. could have been better. Damage is damage. Uh, this thing slams into it, and uh, its eyes kind of focus on you and kind of narrow a bit. Um, well, and I narrow my eyes right back. What's up? It doesn't have eyelids actually, so it can't really narrow its eyes at you. But more of its eyes than normal were kind of looking at. Sorry, this. I can feel it. It's like yeah, a spirit. It's like a, yeah. a, a spiritual yeah. uh, squinting. Eyes go from a mass to a line. Um, and uh, this thing kind of rises up and floats across the room, uh, stopping equidistant between Nil and Calvum. And the hands will reach out and it will slash first at Nil and then at Calvum with these massive spectral claws. Uh, so Nil is going to get slashed at for a 26. Okay. And Calvum is going to get me spending a hero point. That's right, baby. You came to the Gnome Dome. You can't roll against me. That was a loud one. It's even worse. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> he it's did say that that was going to happen. <laughs> it's uh, a 17. That still hits. Well, crap, that hits. I oh, my God, I hit shield you? On me. Yeah, I forgot to put shield on. Glorious. Uh, no escape. I'm going to follow strike him. Curse. No escape. Iris coming right behind <laughs> to keep up with it. Um, and actually, you can stop. Uh, do you want to? I guess you can move here into because you have to stay within reach, yep. right? Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, so Nil is going to feel this thing slam into her. The, so the, the the claws themselves seem to stab into you and and hurt a bit, but then you get hit with this almost concussive force, as though there is a massive amount of just presence behind this, which brings its own impact along with it. And uh, it's going to be um, 19 piercing and force damage. Ouch. Okay, wait, so it's double? No. No, it's, it's that's, that's what it all okay, adds okay, up okay. to. I was like, yeah, sir. I was, I was like, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to damage need on a, normal a uh, will save. Wow, you're on fire. I'm doing great over here. That's a 27. Really? That's real yeah. good. Yeah, she got a 16 on the die. She can okay. roll will saves today. Um, you feel this thing is shakes you with this cold touch, but with a focus of yourself, you fight it off. Uh, Calbum is going to take 20 points of piercing and force damage. This thing hits like a truck, and I'm going to need a will save from Calbum as well. Be there in a minute, bud. Yeah. Yep. That, that, that you didn't even feel it. You're right what I want you. Trying to get our dog back. It's a uh, 15 on the die for a total of a 25. 25. Um, this thing strikes you, and you feel your heart shrivel. Um, this thing almost seems to swell impossibly large before you, and the force it delivers is shaking. Uh, you are going to be frightened one. I mean, honestly, he probably would be. <laughs> he got be real. probably already health bar knocked off. Let's be real. That was a that was a massive hit. <laughs> the gnome literally pisses himself. Um, fifteen. Fifteen on your fortitude save in total. Yep. Uh, the chains, again, a shred in at you, not so much trying to hold you this time. For every time they dig in, they rip away as well. 
Uh, this is going to be 19 points of piercing and slashing as these more and more of your chunks and of your flesh are ripped away. And how would you like to try to get out of this? I'm going to smash that little demon. Give yes. me an athletics check. Big old enlarged or, size hammer. Give me an attack roll. That's the same roll. Oh, so. It's slightly not better, the, actually. Not the Blue Man Group's lost member. Yeah, Blue Man Group's about to be one member. Can it be flanking with the wall? Uh, 24 to bonk. 24 to bonk. You rear your hammer back, and as you charge forward, uh, this thing looks up at you, and there's no, like, recognition in its eyes. It is all just mindless aggression. Uh, hero point, suck upon, derp, roll a nat 20. It'll be funny. It will be. It will be. But I'm saving all the nat 20s for the boss. <laughs> and with a smash of your hammer... Not only do you demolish this little specter of a demon. What'd Desperate you get? swing. <laughs> Desperate swing. There it is. Um, the walls themselves seem to shatter and split. And despite the um, sort of this this leaking energy, um, you, you feel you still feel it ache, but the, the the image itself seems to dissipate. And as the walls of this slaughterhouse fall away around you. Um, out of the darkness kind of materializes the floor of the temple and the desperate fight happening around you. And you hey. pop hey. back into the room. We've got a doggo. Oh, thank God. He's back. Getting your bearings will take a little, a few seconds. Uh, but in the meantime, Iris is up. Oh. oh, now I can focus on you. The spirits are very unhappy with you. <laughs> um, and she will um, uh, charge in at this thing and focus in on one of its eyes at the center. Mm -hmm. um, and she will stab it. You roll the hit with your Farazbin made hooked geese arm. There are no geese on my arms. Uh, oh, that's what that was it. Three across an enormous humanoid creature. Driven. Mm, mm. How uh mm, I'll have the dragon okay with him. Uh that's a thirteen on the die. I appreciate uh, the devotion to the crossword puzzle. Thank you. Uh for a total of a uh twenty-five to flanking. Twenty-five to flanking. You bring in there and swing this thing forward, and this thing swings its hands around, not weighed down by anything so mundane as arms. And they form this almost web of skeletal fingers that deflects your attack. It seems this thing is blindingly quick and without, without, without some kind of advantage. Yeah, 25 to flanking. Without oh, some kind of advantage, uh, it ritual. seems as though that you are not landing that hit. Bummer. You have two uh, actions left though. All right, hmm. Well, let's see what we can do here then. Um, she will charge in at this thing and attempt to grapple it. Okay. Um, she's gonna go and she's gonna grab onto it and she's going to just try to burn it by the very act of touching it with her incorporeal hands. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me an athletics check. It is going to be at minus five uh, because he, do, he does have the attack trait. Yep. But let's see what you get. Uh, that's only going to be a seven on the die, uh, so that's only going to be a 19. Uh, you reach at it, but uh, again, the thing, you with your incorporeal hands, you feel it has a presence, but it seems to be, even though you can try to wrap around it, grabbing it is difficult, and it almost kind of pushes you back off of it. Uh, what's the total? Uh, I think it was 17. 17's the total? Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, you are not knocked down. All right, Nil, you're up. Excellent. Um, I'm going to, as uh, Iris comes on the other, uh, uh, reaching out the hands to try and grab this, hopefully I can get a little bit of uh, surprise on this. Shifting into um, that other, as as everyone else as everyone else has done, shifting into that other plane as I go to swing this staff around and try and clobber this thing. So there are two options that were given to you. There was the one to try to make it easier to throw spells at it, and there was one that was trying to hamper it. Which one would you like to do? Ooh. 
Um, well, honestly, if I could hamper it, that would be great for everybody else. <laughs> okay. Um, so you step into this ritual, and again, you feel as though you have stepped into an icy waterfall. Mm-hmm. Uh, your your skin kind of puckers up, and you feel a presence behind you, uh, cold and hungry. And your your chest seems to almost burn uh, with this this sort of where you took a well, you took a spiritual wound a while ago. Um, however, reaching out, you go and twist uh, the flow as it flows towards this thing. Give me a nature check. You are we're going crazy. Fire today. Um, that is a sixteen on the die for twenty five. Twenty five. Um, this thing seems to shudder in mid air and almost as though pulled by some sort of unseen force or crushed beneath something. It actually is slammed down to the ground. Um, and like its eyes kind of rolling around surprised at what's going on. Uh, it, it, it seems entirely taken by surprise and it seems to be, well, quite more vulnerable, much less able to defend itself. Hmm. All right. Um, well, so, and that was- That was one action. One action. Excellent. Um, can, um, can I, now that it's on the ground, can I go whack? Probably be a bit easier. <laughs> Excellent. Was that considered an attack? It was not. Okay. Oh my my gosh. 19 on the die uh, for a uh, 27. 27 with flanking and it being hampered by its connection to Nimbaloth. Your blow swings true. Roll me some damage. Yes, yes, yes. And I swear if you roll six, I'll be very cross with you. Yeah, so with the shillelagh, does that count on this or no? Should, yeah. Yeah, you powered it up. That's a shillelaghed up staff right there. I just want to make sure that this was, I didn't, I looked at all the things, the tags on this, and I'm I'm, I'm hoping one of these tags is matching. Well, I think the most important thing is the striking on it. That's very (laughs) nice. Okay, so, um... How much is that? Let's 18. see, 12, 18, yeah. There we go, 18 damage. Nice, Six respectable, back. nicely done. Spellcaster's got swings. Um, you <laughs> smash Damn. into it, and that, that scarlet <laughs> energy empowering the staff like actually explodes outward in a concussion as you smash into it. Uh, and the thing uh, kind of writhes underneath it, um, and a kind of a, what is this? Um, hey, look, a dogger. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to the look over there. <laughs> Just gonna rush over towards Calbum, seeing he's not doing too great after that first. Just kind of <laughs> wavering after just getting touched once. I'm fine. Once. I'm fine. He's got it right where I want to get there. He's fine. gonna take two, and then you're gonna get a medicine check here, bud. This is your only yeah, one of the fight. I'm okay. I'm fine. Put me back in, coach. I'm you're good. not. I'm I, okay. I don't think you're gonna need to watch this here because this is this is a big fight. I'm not going to risk you, but you are getting an expert check. Thank you for not stabbing me first. Uh, that's exactly the DC that I needed. Eight on the die plus 12 is a 20. Uh, Good enough for best, an expert. If I roll a one on my 2d8, you go to max health. Okay. So you're healed to full. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I, I cannot not heal you to full health. I don't have that many hit the points. The advantage of not having I'm many <laughs> hit points to begin with. I'm small. <laughs> but you do, as a consolation for getting slapped in the face, get a piece of candy. Okay, I and, you get your uh, battlefield rations. And speaking of candy, uh, the candy guy, you get to go now I with I this what I was gonna do. creature oh, yeah, yeah. that's right in the way. Uh, it didn't slap me when I moved away from here. it. I, f- I don't know if I want to stand here, but I also want to give Drevin. You don't have a melee weapon out. No, you threaten. I got these hands, you know, buddy. That's yep, true. It's even enough. With hands, you know, <laughs> I got these hands. I'll it's throw enough. hands. Um. Or, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna stay here. I'm gonna stay here. I um, am what I am. Uh, okay. So it, I don't need to drink a potion. I was gonna ask if drinking a potion was for clarity in, in the future. How many actions does it take to two. one to pull two. one out and one to yes, drink it? All right. So we're, we're good there. Okay. Yep. Um. Well, in that case, um, I'm gonna just hit him with everything I got. So I pull out many uh, small items. <laughs> from my cat toy hoard. There are three of them, and they all and torn, turn into force uh, um, images of all three of those little things, and he gets hit with three uh, magic missiles, or rather 
what are they called now? Cat force bolts. Toys. Force bolts or whatever they're called now. They're yeah. called cat toys. Um, so that's uh, four, one, and three. So that's uh, eight plus 11. three, eleven. Eleven points of force damage that he cannot avoid because <laughs> you're in the gnome dome, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Roll me a flat shot. I don't like that. I don't want to. <laughs> Can I not? Yeah, I really don't want to roll that. Can I not tell you what that number is? <laughs> <laughs> you have hero points. Good That's news a flat is, check. it's you a flat check. You get D20, you can re-roll it. Um, you know that that number's going to fail, because seven yeah, failed. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn in that one. I don't remember who it's from, but I'm turning that one in, and we're going to re-roll that, because it can't get much worse than a three on the die. Oh, I love it when you Why say it like say that. that. Why would you even say no, that? It's a nine. It's a nine. That's it's significantly nine. better than a three. Yeah, that's, that's better. Three, three times is good. Um... You feel your, um, you, you, you feel that hole uh, in your chest uh, blaze with pain, um, and almost like uh, as though you're standing in a wind in a river in a waterfall, um, and it's almost as though now there's like sand mixed in with it. You feel it like ripping little tiny chunks away off of you as it blasts through you, and it's quite uncomfortable. But at the moment, that is all. Fine, try where I want to be. Who put the gnome in the cement mixer? And this thing, having blasted, laid flat, and as it is pounded down, um, this thing is going to kind of start to tremble and shake. That's right, because it's a spray and the gnome dome. the shadows of the wall start to close in around you, and darkness envelops the lot of you. How's Carmen doing? He's on the ground. <laughs> Carmen <laughs> is in the fetal position right now. He is now. incoherent. Uh, and is, in fact, maybe smashed his head into the ground a few times. So you're saying you can't provide a flanking bonus. Well, I can't. I'm saying right now that you all can't see anything. And you start blinking, and a blue kind of glow kind of appears in the middle of the darkness before swelling out into a massive blast and coming down from the top of the ceiling this thing has seemingly enraged itself with massive amounts of power uh, as it floats back down its hands now the size of your entire body and this thing fleck raises out its hands I'm done with all of you and it reaches forward and hands spread forward throughout all of you. I'm going to need some reflex saves to dodge this onslaught. Oh. I'm super good at those. Thank God for bulwark. Oh, 25. No. Oh no. I think I'm going to use uh, Sully's hero point here. <laughs> good call. Completely untouched. That's right. Uh, he came to the gnome dome. I think we established this because I just crit that. Hey, oh, yeah, the opposite of that. He's very small, is what it is. Right. So he just kind of flat. What are you gonna out. do, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I rolled a five. That's a t uh, fifteen total. Ooh, okay. Uh, Sully's hero point changed it from a three on the die to a sixteen on the die. Same so money. Like, hey, really nice. Yeah, there. I'm, I'm not doing great on that one. Um, what was that? Was reflex? Yeah. Uh, that's a reflex save. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, so that's a twenty-three. Twenty-three. Nineteen. With Nineteen. Four. Okay, so we have a pass. We have a fail. We have a 15. We have 15. That's probably a crit fail. That's a crit fail. Yeah. I crit. You crit, you succeed. Excellent. 25. 25 total? They have the whole range of things. 25 total is a. Let me think, let me think. What was it? Did you get a 25? Uh, 23. You're 23. It's a success. I'm already treating Calvin. Just get down! <laughs> You're like, I'm fine, bud. What are you doing? You will take six less. Okay. As this thing meets its first encounter with the hammer. Very nice. Very As nice. Retributive Strike swings down. You thought you were safe oh, up there. Actually, works twenty. Fuck. All right. Twenty-seven. Uh, twenty-seven. You slam into this thing. Oh, it's bigger now. It has a smaller AC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pulsing bigger. And I it's now have a plus one striking, disrupting Ghost Touch Mall. At least one of those is useful. Yeah. That's what matters. So that is six and five for 11, plus six for 17. Seven. Because I get a plus two bonus to my damage from yeah. being enlarged. That's right. Very nice, very nice. 
Um, you slam into this thing, and it shudders a bit. But in the meantime, the hands have struck out. So all of you who failed are going to take 20 points of force damage. All of you who succeeded will take 10. All of you who failed will take... Critical fail will take 40. I'm legally standing. <laughs> the important kind. Calvin I have be, four health. Calvin will be heckin' dead. But not this time. So and the last thing it's going to do I is it's to going to right flex now. and <laughs> you see almost a a web that was around it break and shatter as it swells up to its full height and the effects of Nil's hindrance is shaken off. Drevin, you're up. I mean, I'm here. You are here. And I have a hammer. Yep. And it's right in front of me. It is right in front of you. So I'm going to hit it twice. Go for it. That is a, is that a 15? That is a 15 for a 26. You swing down with a 26, and its hands move in this complicated pattern and knock your hammer aside. And then... Its AC went up? It's more like its AC went back to where it was. Yeah. Its hindrance got dropped. I hit it on the six. You, you were in the it gnome hindered. dimension. It, it just got dropped. You know... I will have to stay where I am. Instead of swinging twice, I'll five foot step down and left. Just diagonal. Uh huh. And then I will lay on hands myself. Okay. Protect, stepping into protective range of nil. Iris, what's up? It seems that this thing has redoubled its efforts. Oh dear. Uh, well. There's only one thing to do. Uh, she'll um, run around it uh, to at least try to give some flanking to Dreven. Uh, ten feet out away from it, please. I think. You Remember, because got... I'm large, I give a very I... big arc. You do actually. I think there is actually exactly your twenty-five. Perfect. Miss Fleet Barbarian, and you can do it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, she will. Um, she will send off a prayer to Phrasma. Um, lady, you've sworn me to never look upon the knowledge of this thing. So give me the power to hurt it the right way. There we go. Um, and, uh, she will wing off a prayer to Phrasma that Phrasma will send her some sort of assistance because she's refused to embrace the knowledge of this thing. Oh, well. And then she'll stab in at it. Roll me that hit. Oh, no. It's its final form. It is its it final is. form. Yeah. Uh, it's only going to be a 7 on the die, though, so it's only an 18. It's an 18. Um, your prayer to Phrasma goes off, and you feel your nerves steady, um, but... Your blow does not strike true. Nil. Okie dokie. This is kind of an interesting endeavor that I would like to do. I'm going to shift from trying to um, uh, hinder it to trying to fire off a spell. Okay. So you want to step into the ability to hit it with spells now? Yes. Um, you take a step sideways, and uh, again, it you feel yourself steady uh, and drop the hindrance attempt. Okay, and then um, and then I would like it to make a fortitude save. I don't know. <laughs> How good this is going to work? Well, Oroku-san says that uh, I'm going to... Wait, gonna... wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, no, Stop, no, stop. No, that's, really that's good. He rolls bad with these. <laughs> it's true. He does, he it's just going to get worse. Oh, it's going to get way better. Oh, Consistency! No! <laughs> yeah. We know what happens when he re-rolls nice. these. That it a went one? from like a seven to a two. This die's going to go over here. Is that no, a no, one? No, no, keep that die. Keep that was it a one? It's not a one, no. But total is 26. Okay, well, that's great. I mean, it did succeed, but it didn't critically succeed. Is it going to grow leeches? Um, <laughs> it is, actually. <laughs> the eyes just start sprouting. So, yeah, right. so yeah, the eyes, so there's all these, like, little great eyes, right? Um, and some of you can see, like, a, a vein running through one of the eyes. And the vein kind of grows as you, um, I don't know, you kind of notice it, like, start to twitch. 
Um, How would you like your abomination to be even worse? (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, great show, guys. Phase three has happened, and uh, now it is uh, going to be the uh, leech void glutton. Right, and it'll uh, and there's just and you can see you can't actually see what's in the uh, a couple of the eyes, but you can tell there's something just like just vein lines kind of appearing on these eyes, and they're clearly in pain. Um, so Bryn just needs to be a horror writer. Dude, I Good hate it. I hate it so <laughs> much. I'm so the one who gave you the spells. I'm my. I'm, it's fair enough. I mean, I didn't give it to you. I got it out of the book. I should have known better. Really, is what it nice. should have been. I saw um, it, and I was like, oh, no, Brent will love this, and I didn't really think I of consequences. I do love this. This is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the consequences of my actions. So that is uh, for 12 damage. The, 12 damage, and is that after having it from success? Yeah. I didn't actually. think the leeches would Dang. eat my face. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it actually That's exactly it, what I was it doesn't have on successes. It actually takes regular damage, but it doesn't take persistent damage. Ah, which well, is there you go. Uh, probably due to the lack of flesh, aside from the eyes that got eaten. I mean, there, there's always There's a, a lot of eyes. There's a lot of eyes. Uh, roll me a flat check. Okay. I'm worried about this one, actually. Oh, I was right to be worried about it. Um, that's a seven. That is a seven. Um, so you uh, feel a uh, that ache in your chest. You almost feel it spread through you like a crack. Um, it's not a new wound, but the existent one gets significantly worse, and you feel yourself stumble. You are doomed one. Okie dokie. Um... And you can almost like, it's almost like you can see like your ribs through your chest as this thing kind of swells into this crater. She probably thinks that's cool. It doesn't feel very cool. It doesn't feel good. It might look good. You might be like, man, that would be really cool if it wasn't on me. Science is important. Um, Um, Okay, that's my turn. Corwin. Well, this is going to be a fairly passive turn as Corwin's not feeling great. Just kind of looking down at his chest, finding, you know seven points that have been rent through his armor. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a quick uh, battle medicine on myself here, because I'm at four health, and it feels bad. You want a risky? <laughs> no. <laughs> if I didn't have another thing to do, I would absolutely have a potion, and then risky, but I have another thing I need to do oh right now. That would be real oh. I love the idea, though. It's so funny. It Freedom seem, never it sleeps. Seem, I would absolutely hell divers myself. The gambling but around here. You know how it goes. I have other things to gamble on this turn. Oh, yes. So just a regular medicine check. Uh, that's a 17 on the die, though. Plus 12 29. is a 29 total, which is one off a of crit success. Bummer. Unfortunately. Well, you do get some health back. I get a lot of health back. See if you risked yourself and didn't yeah. kill yourself. Uh, well, let, uh, just because potential, let's roll the risky die. I'd be on the ground. You'd be on the ground. <laughs> uh, would practice. Been hilarious. Keep practice. That would have been hilarious. 12 plus 5, 17 plus 19 is 36 health back. So I am up to exactly 40. I can just add a zero beside this. Cool. Uh, and my remaining two actions are going to be as he's dressing his own wounds here real quick. P- pushing his guts Just back into his stomach. Just got a hand down between the hilt of what is now on his belt, the mirror directly beside Najee's hilt, just grabbing both at the same time. And just, Najee, how do I kill this thing? Mocker, what's going on with it? And using Mocker's esoteric knowledge on it. Uh, so Mocker looks at this thing, uh... And you kind of hear his voice go out. Oh, oh, wow. Ha, man, that thing's awful. Uh, have you tried pledging your life to Saren Ray? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not the time, The Lady bud. of Light would give you blessings. I'm sure I had some. Uh, I had some. You can kind of hear him patting his, the, the, the psychomet. The, you can hear the psychic uh, image kind of like patting his pockets. I had a holy icon. I'd put it on Najee and like the light of the lady would burn it away. Um, he starts giving you advice on the proper esoteric on what to do about it. Um, well, it sounds guess. like it might be good advice at some point. Yeah. Calbum, what you doing? Um, all right. Well, Calbum is, um, going to stay exactly where he is because it is as far away as he can possibly get without, you know, going outside the room, which I imagine we can't do. You can't, no. You seem to be at the uh, <laughs> it's a fog wall. It's stopping you. Um, Calvin reaches into his uh, into his assorted cat toys again, pulls them out, and they light on fire, and then he throws them across the room at this thing um, as uh, as blazing bolts. So this time it's a, uh, 
a bowl of string. Where's my other stuff? Here it is. Um, Read in the desk. Yep. And then that toy with the little, little, uh, uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, there's many cat toys. Cat toy ASMR. Light on fire <laughs> and uh, and blaze across the room. Now I have to hit some. I have to roll to hit. Um, unfortunately. Roll to hit. It's unhindered AC. So. But standing as you are in Nimbaloth's current, you do have an advantage. Great. I like that. That's an 18 on the die for a 28. 28. Pretty good. Solid hit. Great. I like that. Well, at least one hit. That's an eight on the die. So 10 less than that. I that don't imagine that's 18. going to hit. <laughs> and even worse. Great. Uh, okay. One of them will make its way through and barely. Roll that damage. I don't like how you say barely. Not, not, not nice. Uh, but that's, that is nice. That's 11 uh, damage nice. from flamey little cat toys. <laughs> pelting him. Um, and as you smash into it, uh, these sort of like wispy flares of blue light seem to be kind of breaking out from it, almost as though its form is struggling to contain the power that it sucked into it. That's right. It's power of the gnome dome. And this thing is going to reach out sort of a hand and it's going to raise itself over Carmen's cowering form. And he is hyperventilating, curled up in absolute terror. It's fine, he's an NPC, go for him. <laughs> Kill him, I don't, I'm fine. I warned him that going down here wasn't a good idea. <laughs> Burn your whole you turn on him, but I don't consequences, care. boy. <laughs> might have healed him. And the uh, uh, hero lips. point for Nil from Eight. Magus Plane. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait, I get candy. Uh, I get aura myself. of protection. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> the magic sustains me. This seems incredibly useful. And you hear Cal uh, Carmen's kind of like terrified whimpers uh, actually like kind of get a little hollow, like he's running out of breath. And the creature itself will swell. Uh, with power, that blazing kind of coming a bit under control as it feeds on his fear. Did it do damage? Nope. Okay. Um, and is he really an ally, if you think about it? <laughs> In the moment. Um, but I'll tell you what will do damage, um, is uh, he's going to rise up and he's going to spin about, um, fla flailing, flailing out his arms, slashing through both Drevin and Iris. Uh, as he flails about, working Would he to connect. Also hit Carmen. Just curiosity. Um, no, it does not hit Carmen cool. actually. Uh, just attack rolls. Uh, these are just normal attack rolls. Um, so uh, Drevin, it's going to hit you for a uh, thirty-seven. All right, that'll crit. And Iris is going to hit you for a twenty-eight. Uh, that is a normal hit, sir. Uh, Drevin is going to get slammed with this thing. Perhaps it's the fact that he's big and more of these hands can rip into him. Uh, for a grand total of 26 force and piercing. Not down. And I'm going to need a will save. And Iris is going to meet with 17 piercing and force. And a will save for Iris as well. 28. Roll a 19. Nice. Uh, you good. feel that icy terror bite into you, but you force and fight oh it boy. off. Oh, uh, boy. That's going to be a one on the die, good sir. You are Crichton 17. <laughs> yeah, yeah, car over there? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, Iris gets hit by this, and um, sort of in the middle of uh, villain point from Sokopan for oh, Daddy boy. Nick. Corey, you betrayer. Ah, uh, he knows what side his bread yeah. is buttered on. Cool. All the work I uh, for you. DMs have to stick together. <laughs> I'm getting AJ to run a session of secrets specifically so I can pump the party up now. <laughs> and we, um, this thing bites into you, and the cold of Nimbaloth's embrace, you feel it through this claw. And you are going to be frightened too. It strikes you to the core. Oh. Oh boy. That feels bad. Revan, you're up. My father needed to be fed. I provide. I will <laughs> regrip my maul, step forward just to try and present the most 
welcoming target to this thing and keep it away from everyone against the wall. Mm -hmm. Looking very ragged from both the chains and this thing ripping into me, but still doing my best to be an obstacle as I swing down and try and smash this thing with my third action. Natural yeah. 20. There we go. <laughs> Roll the damage. It's now prone. He has crit spec. It's prone. <laughs> it's flanked. It's prone. Smush. That's a mighty fine mass. Of yes. Eyeballs. Yes. 50 damage. Nice. <laughs> That's an 11 and a 9. <laughs> what happens? Uh, <laughs> did you include your disrupting? I don't get that. He it's doesn't, he doesn't get positive. It's not undead. Oh, no, that's an 11 that's and a damage. 6, which is uh, 17. 17 plus another 6. So when I say what happens, you don't just have to uh, add the numbers up. <laughs> letting everybody know what the math is. Okay. As I smash through this thing, a lot less thing there than you would expect, despite the hands ripping into us, as the, the Ghost Touch Rune lets me just kind of rip through the Spectral Essence and dissipate this thing in a whoosh as what corporeal parts of it may be fall to the ground, I suppose. Little eggs, or little, uh, little grapes. And yes. you crack through this thing. And as you do, it kind of shudders, cracks, and then it, did it Corey. explodes <laughs> with a mass of azure energy that washes out over the lot of you, uh, flinging you all backwards with the explosion of the power it has glutted itself on. Taking the full advantage of all of our sound effect library. If I may spend <laughs> one more supply. Jars! As we're flying <laughs> back to the air to catch a single eye in a jar and give it to Nil as we land on our backs. Guess who has five health at the end of that fight? Oof. Not even close. We had doomed players. I was at full health. I'm fine. We had. Oh, You're welcome. Does that mean I have to try harder? <laughs> I, Iris will walk over to Drevin and, and look up at him. And I'm say, sitting and you're still looking up. It's a big dog. <laughs> and she'll just start petting him. Yeah, you, you, it does last for another like five minutes. So. Yeah, I, I, Iris is a little out of it, it seems. I, Iris is pretty out of it. She's just going to sit there and pet you. The fog and shadows clothing the walls dissipate and you find yourself once more in the even more thoroughly wrecked Temple of Nimbaloth. It is quiet and you take a moment to rest as this the enormity of this fight comes and falls upon you. The way below is clear and it seems as though a vital servant of Belcora, and indeed Nimbaloth herself, has been slain. That's gonna be all for our finale of season one. Everyone worked very hard, nobody died. Man, the mechanics of this, I wanna share it with you exactly what was going on, but we'll discuss oh, that yeah, during the show, post yeah. show. Bun was very scared. Bun was, it was a scary place to be. I wasn't sure if you were gonna live through it. I kept the faith, didn't look into the darkness. Super proud. Best for Asman. Despite, despite Best for my... Asman, best Serenite doggo. Who needs your pitiful buffs when I can just put 20s on the table? I mean, if you just roll nothing but 20s, it helps. But the buffs really did help you guys. I mean, yeah, that would have been... Yeah. I, and I did it with, it with no buffs in the end. And we will <laughs> come back. Except you were enlarged the whole time. In a little bit <laughs> for season two. In the meantime, please feel free to check out our other shows. We have Secrets Between the Stars on Wednesdays. We have... Strange Aeons, the strangest of Aeons, Chapter 3 going on now on Saturdays. And uh, if you want to check out the post show that we're about to go and do, uh, you can see it drop on early on Patreon. $5 gets you access to almost everything that is there. Actually, absolutely everything, as I recall. Yeah. And Kofi. And Kofi as well. Kofi's better. He's Kofi. directly better. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, then uh, you can see the crazy shenanigans that we're about to have. What's up? Are we, are we level 5 now? 
when we come back. I think you all deserve to be level five. Yay! Yes. Fireball the party all the time! That was my evil plan all along. <laughs> there were two sections in there where I'm just like, if you weren't on the other side of the room, we could fireball this thing. Dude, twice. I was absolutely going to throw a fireball. Thank we'll you all for joining us on this, our fine finale. Appreciate all the support you gave, both me and the party. I had a great time with it. I didn't even, I, I, I feel like, man, the hero, but it doesn't matter though, because if I roll like a three into a five or something, it, I, if, as long as it has plus like 20 to hit, it's okay. I still hit people, so it works out great. Looking forward to see you guys next time. Have a good one. Thanks, y'all.